Hong Kong, everyone, and welcome to Squawking Dead, your number one source of squeezing every bit of analysis juice until you're sick of analysis juice. Our website has been overhauled 6,000 times in the last week, and I think we're finally settled on a version that's passable. Head over to squawkingdead.com and give us your take on it via email at squawkingdeadpodcast at gmail.com. On our last episode, we left off with the plan working, for the most part. Our team now permanently labeled Auk by Eugene, Alexandria Hilltop Kingdom, managed to prevent the saviors from getting their hands on some major firepower held the walkers into position at the sanctuary and even managed to wrangle themselves some savior hostages. Yeehaw! <laughs> but as Rick finally approaches the junkyard gang with Polaroids that he and his team have taken over their victories, the sons of bitches done done him Daryl style, stripped him down and threw him into a hull to wait an unknown fight. Mm-hmm. We now pivot over to the sanctuary where Eugene is tasked with the very important duty of saving the saviors. And in large part, that's what episode 7 of season 8 of The Walking Dead centers around. And we couldn't be more drawn in. As as always, I turn to my partner in crime, the double to my trouble, an idealized version of my doppelganger, Carol. Hi! I think this is a very interesting episode, Eugene-centric episode, which, honestly, I find them to have been pretty interesting when they center around Eugene, because he's such an interesting character. I've said this before, and you know we've talked about this. Like, I mean, everybody wants to imagine if the apocalypse happens, they'd be Daryl. Nah, most people would be Eugene. Like, that's just... I'm, I'm sticking by that. And, but, we, all, so, and we discover kind of like the reason why too like yeah. why they would be a eugene why you would be a eugene yeah i mean the logic behind it makes sense so it was really interesting to see um eugene's point of view and and where dwight's coming from um we saw more recklessness from daryl um and tara too Carol. so uh yeah tara yeah, in my notes <laughs> in my notes basically all the scenes where dara and tara tara and daryl are in it's just labeled tara i just couldn't Terrell. even bother with tara oh my god daryl tara <laughs> Rosita, michelle i was just like tara that's no, good tara exactly yeah, <sighs> their behavior man uh <laughs> Tara, are... Tara more than anything, I think. She really eggs da- da- uh, Daryl on. She did. She did egg him on. Like, no, we can do it. We can handle it. It's like, oh, man, Come on. Like... Let's do it. Come on. Yeah. I'm like, let's Tara, punch on. I don't understand that at all. I was like, yeah. oh, no, I'm not. I don't think this is a good plan. And I mean, Michonne and Rosita, you know, finally came to their senses. But... I mean, not Daryl and Tara, and you know, we all saw what they did, and you know, yep. Rick looked pretty shocked when he realizes what happened. So, oh yeah, oh yeah, and that's yeah, and so that we find out Rick does kind of leave the crutches of the junkyard gang, the trash so hipsters. Weird. So bizarre, but not without some strangeness and some terrify terrification. <laughs> oh, God, they're just so bizarre, aren't they? Yeah. It's so weird. Yeah, and we'll I... we'll definitely get to that because there's yeah. just so much to unpack there. Not yeah. as much as Eugene, though. I have to yeah. admit, Lots which to I'm glad about. for. Yeah. So one thing one thing that I wanted to ask was, have we ever really had besides the episode where uh where Eugene puts the I think it was the glass in the gas tank or the sand or whatever it was in that mm-hmm. in that bus they were trying to use to get to DC? Mm-hmm. Um, did we really have we ever really gotten a Eugene centric episode? I mean, I don't we think did. we've ever really gotten. Um, uh, no, we've gotten we've gotten character episodes in past seasons before, um, here and there, but um, but I don't think we've ever seen as much solitary uh, not, character yeah. episodes as this season. Not as much as this season, for sure. Like this season is really the first time that we've really explored Eugene as a character and his person, because he always was basically second fiddle to uh, Abraham to Rosita. Like he was just sort of just kind of there. So yeah. you, we never really ventured much into well what's what's eugene about you know and so now finally this season we are getting that because basically you know negan pumps him up like i mean i don't know if i necessarily believe negan in the kind of things that he tells him about like you know how magnificent he is and how he's the second most important important person here i don't know if he necessarily believes all that but he definitely does a good job of, of basically pumping him up and like you know feeding his ego and just making him feel that he is an important factor and you know it, it, ben- it totally benefits Negan totally 
And so it, it definitely, we are getting a lot more. And he's, the character of Eugene is getting a lot of attention. He's getting attention from the episode. And in the episode, he's getting attention from Negan. Like he isn't just a nobody. He isn't just like a background player anymore. He's like a, a formidable figure. And I feel that he will definitely play a big factor in the mid-season finale, um, especially when he has that conversation with Dwight and, and Dwight mentions about um, having basically blood on your hands. I, I just feel that that's going to come back. I, I just feel that right. that was kind of an ominous conversation. Yeah, and it, it, it does kind of hail back to what Dylan, as I found out, it was Dylan and you were right, um, that, that savior that they had, that um, mm-hmm. Jesus had captured and taken the, to the hilltop. It hails back to him because he, he basically says the same thing. You know, we're, you know we've, we've all come into this to try to find safety and try to contribute in some fashion. But, you know, obviously being with the savior is, in general, you're just going to end up with blood on your hands. Hands. And yeah. it's it's as if there's just no other this the way this whole system is set up. There's just no other way around it. And Eugene yeah. is. We slowly start to see that through illusion and through interactions and just basically the well, the overview of the whole show is kind of showing us that you know even with all the crazy things that have happened throughout the seasons, the last few seasons with the Saviors, there's just subtle reminders throughout this episode that of the the terror that has been kind of inflicted in order to maintain order and reorganize power as uh, Eugene as uh, Eugene as Negan says almost Eugene <laughs> I'm kidding <laughs> but uh yeah it's 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 very interesting to see that play out in in a more subtle way in a less menacing way which is kind yeah. of welcome because in some form of fashion I think with all the face burning and the bat hitting and, and all that stuff we we kind of lost sight of the subtle ways in which the saviors have kind of operated sure. you know the more yeah. subtle terror Exactly. Terrification. Terrification. They, they, yeah, they definitely um, give off an air and set a tone that's that's present. Um, and and I think you know the Jeffrey D. Morgan who plays Negan just does such a good job with the character in terms of always making you feel that at any moment <laughs> you know he could switch it on you. Um, oh yeah. And his conversations with Eugene and just you just never know necessarily what's going to happen. So yeah, I think it was it, very interesting. Yeah. And you, you almost have to give credit to the writers in this episode because there are things that I picked up the writers and also the the people that do props and makeup and, and that construct each storyboard because like there are little things within the episode that, you know, I could I could even just mention get out of the way now is just when Dwight kind of focuses on on, on Eugene after his first conversation with Negan, mm-hmm. uh, how he leans in and says the burning flesh and it kind of shows his face up close Dwight's face so there's that reminder and then right after that you see a scene uh, you see a scene of two saviors uh, barricading the door and the male savior actually has a burned face as well yes I noticed that Yeah, I I didn't notice notice at the first take but I did notice at the second take the second time I watched it to to write notes and it's just so subtle It's it's a small obviously a much smaller burn because it seems like Dwight needed a little bit more more uh reminding yeah Um, but you see that and then tanya you get that um where you know tanya is just basically a living reminder of of living in a cage you know being a caged bird who sings so to speak for her essentially you know in the very nihilistic part of it so you 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 get these you got these you know writing mechanic hints you get these prop hints she's still in the dress too the same dress you'd think she'd change but i guess that's the attire yeah still in the black cocktail dresses Mm -hmm. so uh yeah so and I'm sure there's there's other things we'll touch upon on the way, but uh, yeah, I mean, so do you want to start with? Um, do you want to go like in chronological order, or? I think we could handle it by like group, like each uh, each little. Oh yeah, uh, but by group, but by but like starting from the top, of the show with Eugene. Yeah, I okay. think so. You know, I'm editing. I'm gonna edit this out, right? That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay. Okay. That's cool. Okay. That's cool. It's organic. It's organic. Yeah. It's so organic. So editing. organic. <laughs> so organic. <laughs> All right. So, okay. Yeah. So I, I think we really start out with Eugene just pacing around his room yes. uh, with the list. 
Uh, which right. is so funny. Yeah, that was what pretty know, funny. His various columns. Yeah, what I know, what I don't know, things I'm unaware of. Holy, you know, like two out of these things, you just can't possibly write down. So <laughs> it was it was very interesting that that's how he categorized everything. Yeah, and you know what's so you know what's even more funny about that is that the show kind of it keeps us on our toes. Let's yes. just say because from the beginning when we first started talking about Eugene, I think in the first episode, my overall impression of him was that he was an idiot. He was, he was actually kind of an idiot. I think that everybody got that impression. It was like a doofus. Kind of like, yeah. Doofus. Like I had no doubt that in some narrow way he was highly intelligent but it, for the most part just socially stupid and awkward. Right. Uh, just no, you just no sense of social skills. Uh, no. no. No like emotional intelligence. No just does not know how to navigate the world which kind of says something about the show like how you know how people like these probably wouldn't have lasted as long but for some how he made it through and that's kind of like why this episode is so important actually because yeah. you start to see the ways in which that catches up with him yes. you know the how sheltered he was and how it fed into this idea of really needing to get safety you know to really almost desperately cling to the safest harbor you know no right. matter what it is and and maybe make the most of it you know i mean obviously yeah. i think he wants to try to do good but you know i think his safety comes is paramount to that so oh, yeah absolutely but yeah so yeah and then that's where we see the first confrontation between him and dwight which is kind of good I'm, I'm glad they kind of did that right off the bat you know the confrontation between he and dwight you know where he mentions awk and to tell him to t- cease and desist you know so Awk. yeah awkward awkward basically dwight is telling to uh, let it play out you know you've seen what happens here you if you don't go blood in your hands, you don't you don't got blood in your hands yet, but that's coming. Yeah. Once you do th- once you do those things, you become those things, and there's no going back. No. I forgetting thought it. I thought that was a really excellent monologue for Dwight. I mean, I thought that was really well done, and I think that that what he said is going to come back. That was very ominous. It was very much a, for- a foreshadowing to me of what could happen, especially because they still make the point of showing that Eugene still has that red paint on his thumb it's still there yeah literally uh literally the sign of blood on his hands exactly but, yeah and and you know it's funny as we're talking um i remember that we have met dwight and sherry before um mm-hmm. we knew them at the sanctuary really you know we right. saw them doing some sneaky things to daryl mm-hmm. yeah um some quite sneaky things but but at the same time you know you know we thought that I lost my thought there. <laughs> it's just weird that we've seen him and we've known about the saviors for so long. We like in in such a kind of drawn out way, in a slowly drawn out fashion, mm-hmm. and to kind of see him get to this point where he was subjugated, much in the way that Daryl was subjugated, but it kind of stuck. Yeah. Um. But we see him here finally, kind of standing up and really realizing what the cost has been. And I think in a weird way, Dwight is sympathetic to Eugene. He's kind of like saying, Yeah. I think so. You know, it, otherwise, he would we wouldn't be bothering with him. But I think he's going through something right now where he's just sick and tired of of, of doing this anymore. You know, to, to of, of, it's just got to stop somewhere. I can't maybe maybe I can't erase the blood that's already in my hands, but I can at least stop from spilling some anymore. Right. right. You know? I think so. I mean, I mean, I think that Dwight is is. You know, he, he's he's come a long way and he, he's trying to, you know, turn things around and but yeah, he, he's experienced what he's told Eugene. He he's had to kill people that he hasn't wanted to, you know, because that's part of being a savior and he he's he has to live with that. He has to live with that every day. Yeah. And it, the worst reminder of that is his the, the toll it took on his relationship with Sherry. Yeah. You know, and now she's gone. And so For now. I think there's yeah, I think there's part of yeah, for now yeah, sorry <laughs> uh, no that's fine uh but yeah it's it's but yeah it's necessary for this plot device <laughs> to know that yes. she's gone right. so right. yeah so uh eugene my th- yeah the thing about eugene is that it's it's not only even abraham but it was a rosita as well like there's there's yeah, no doubt absolutely. in my mind that that part of their weird trio relationship was that like abraham was the dad and rosita was the mom and mm-hmm. uh you know and then he saw them having ugly sex and you know, yeah. dolphins. nobody ever was it forgets dolphins? that. 
Dolphin smooth. Dolphin, dolphin smooth. Like yeah. nobody forgets those things. Those no. two pieces, nobody ever forgets. Nope. And you know, but unlike a kid, he kind of just sat there and watched. So. Yes. <laughs> so. Yes. Uh, and so I think Tara stopped him. I think it was Tara that came and was like, "Uh, dude." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it further reinforces like his sense of needing safety, and then yes. it, with every little terrifying thing that happens, like he does keep a his a cool head, but at the same time, his first instinct is to cling to the cult of Negan, you know, to really For embrace sure. it, you know, let it envelop him, you know, s- s- keep like a like a safety bubble, you know, and, yeah. and oh, yeah. as long as he's within that safety bubble, he seems to function, you know, mm-hmm. like fully. And again, head on his shoulders because he's safe. You know, when he's yeah. terrified, he's, he's we've seen him in the past. When he's terrified, he's kind of like he just he's hysterical. He just oh, can't yeah. keep it together. Yeah, he's he's yeah, he falls apart. We see him like fall apart part several times several times, Multiple <laughs> but, times at a time. but what's funny about that is it may it makes me pivot to gregory a little bit and how how pathetic he was when what he what he was doing what he usually does isn't working you know he, he can't politic his way out of being thrown in the pig pen the savior pig pen at the hilltop right. and he's just a mess and it's yeah. the only thing he knows and eugene safety essentially is been the only thing he knows too like he knows some killing but he doesn't really know killing let's be really honest you know or or at least putting down walkers is what i meant but it's well but he doesn't know killing either you know so it's it's this thing where you draw these these parallels between gregory who's kind of a detestable character in the way he goes about it and eugene is kind of like uh in a way he's kind of innocent you know as much as he puts on a front uh throughout you know in some spots in the episode he he's kind of the same thing except without the big being a horrible person is his primary thing is like not wanting to kill or hurt anybody right. yep slowly you know I, I i if i support one cause the other you know these people die if i do nothing the say you know the the, yeah. the the people at the savior die the workers the, the saviors themselves you know so yeah. what am i supposed to do these people have kept me safe you know i, right. I have a function i have a role i'm important you know mm-hmm. so he has a all, purpose here he yeah, has a purpose exactly. at the sanctuary which he didn't really have with rick I mean, he didn't really have any sort of purpose. He was just there. So he, you know, he, yeah. he's... Oh, and that's a big, that's a big thing too, because it, another one of the things we start, we started talking about, I think even in the first episode is that he, I mean, every scene that we see him in, uh, at least in the last season, he's just useless. He doesn't, he doesn't, no. he doesn't really contribute. He doesn't, all the things that he was able to do at the sanctuary, mm-hmm. like, uh, the, the cool little science experiments he did for the ladies, for Negan's yeah. wives. Yes. Um, um, all the cool things like even the bullet making it, right up to the mm-hmm. it starts with the bullet making but right away Negan capitalizes on that oh yeah you know and 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 the first kind of act that we see that has some sort of intelligence and you know if we hadn't seen that we wouldn't even we wouldn't even be known like all the stories that he was telling to Abraham and Rosita I we could have just called him on his bullshit but right exactly but, but here he's like magically some important person here he has an actual function you know he so the survival function. stuff is not for him no he actually has a function he actually has a purpose he doesn't just have to f- fight for his survival he as long as he you know basically does his job he's protected he's looked after and yeah. that's and basically rewarded. it and rewarded you know, his status like he's no rick <laughs> he's no, no he's, Daryl. He's, no but he's up there he's like in the upper you know basically he's upper management oh yeah the second most important there the person there <laughs> that's a big deal yeah. he was about to kiss his hand though i was like wow man <laughs> I actually, when I saw that, I was like, does he want to kiss his hand? And then he started that's... doing it. I'm like, oh, I was thinking the same thing. I'm like, oh, all right, I guess I would do that too, because that's the kind of person I am in the Walker apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that was the thing. It was like I think Josh McDermott, the actor, said that it's like the way he ex- he he extends his hand. He's like, you, you know, that's that's automatically what he would think, which I guess, yeah, because the way he extended his hand. I mean, then he kind of explains afterwards when he's like, oh, you know, like, what are you doing? And he's like, you know, get up. So it's almost, I get the impression that he was trying to, I I guess when he put his hand out, it was to get him up to shake his hand. Because the way he had his hand, it was sort of like, hey, look at my engagement ring. Like, it was just, I don't know. It was just, it wasn't in a handshake form. It was like, you know. I'll make you the happiest wife. (laughs) 
Yes. <laughs> it was in a very different form. So, but yeah, then yeah. the way they made it seem, it's like, okay, that he wanted him to get up and then shake his hand and, you know, show him mutual respect, which, yeah. again, not necessarily something that he got with Rick's group. I mean, they tolerated him, but it, yeah, I don't think that there was a mutual respect. No. Yeah, because he's pulled some shit, too. That's yeah. the, oh, no, that's for thing. sure. No, and every every single time. time. <laughs> No, I mean, I don't blame Rick and, and, and Team Grimes for that. I mean, no, no, who can really? Yeah. You know, but here he's like, he's revered almost. He's I was going to say, revered. Very strange dude. But, but yeah, the pickle thing. Come on. <laughs> he He's eccentric. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but if you think about it, he's kind of like a safe harbor for, for so many of these people. Like, think of all the people in the upper echelons, like, like, uh, what was Simon. her name? Regina, Simon. Yeah, exactly. All these fr- Frightening, terrifying, even Gavin to a certain extent. Let's mm-hmm. be honest. And then there's you Eugene. Know? And then there's Eugene. He's like, oh, I can talk to this guy. You know, yeah. he can do me favors, and we can exchange right. things. He just, yeah. he doesn't, he doesn't take like the upper echelon. You know, like like the no. people protecting the workers. No. Because and also because I feel like a lot of the guys in Negan's, you know, cabinet, for lack of a better word, ba- basically get off on this sort of like, do- excuse me, dominating the population and all of that. Like they, they enjoy that. So they enjoy being like formidable and intimidating and all that sort of thing. So yeah. whereas Eugene, he's not that person. That's that's not who he is whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. It well, it's not only that they enjoy it. I mean, they enjoy it because it's part. Part of their ethos i mean yes. this the saying the saying is we take what's ours we don't give nothing back you mm-hmm. know and and that's just them you know that they, they, that's what these saviors are and the workers are they're almost mutually exclusive you know they're part of the same umbrella but they're just mutually exclusive from oh totally they're not even like they're not really even saviors you know so they, they're just people that are under them you know they're part of the savior economy they're they're capital city <laughs> if you will. Yeah. The saviors are like the warriors in the castle and you have like all these like peasants that essentially like live under their thumb. Yep. The knights and the, the knights, you could even say lords, knights, and then you have the serfs, you know, the yeah. serfs and peasants. Yeah. Essentially that's what it is. Yep. And then you have the the hilltop, the Alexandra and uh, the kingdom. And these are kind of just like, they're like, uh, it's like all this fiefdom stuff. You know, they're yes. giving fiefs to the king, King Negan. King Negan. Yeah. Not it, to be con- not to be confused with King Ezekiel. Or King Arthur, even. <laughs> Because he's got his square table full of uh, little dents in it. Yes. But, uh, yeah. But so the next scene, we do see Doctor Carson. We 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 see him again because I know I I think I remember seeing him at the hilltop when they mm-hmm. took him finally. Yeah. You know, like, we saw a little bit. Of, mm-hmm. Yeah. And uh, basically, uh, you kind of just start seeing that that with with all the kindness that Carson is trying to extend to the Eugene, basically trying to say, hey, I know you're a nice guy, and this guy was your friend, traveling compartment. Uh, yes traveling, traveling companion. companion um you know and basically that's it like eugene kind of just tries to distance himself what you know and you start to see his commitment to the saviors you know he yeah. starts to see his outward yes. you know posturing you know and it's not malicious it's not no. you know, it, first of all it's just eugene first of all he's just right. he seems to be just like this you know like yes. on, on a regular basis but yeah this this uh i mean he had to pretend for so long to be this important doctor Scientist, eugene porter whatever yeah yeah, exactly. So he knows how to pretend to be something that he's not. So, oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, so he, to just stay alive, you know, he had to pretend to be that way to get this this protection from Abraham and Rosita for so long. So, yeah. I mean, it, so and then you know, uh, and then in the end, he kind of just says, y- Carson, just it, it, it's it's kind of cool what he just said. He what he makes him do. He's just not a he's not just a doctor. He's a person that cares, and he he kind of goes, hey, well, look at it this way. Do you want him to die? He's like, no. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. So That's he kind of just gets. Kid. Or of, of you really quick. Yeah. He was off the fence in Eastern medicine for the doctor, <laughs> uh, for, for Father Gabriel. I'm sorry. Yeah. Things are getting dire at the sanctuary. I mean, pretty much. I mean, it just sounded the, the way he made it seem, it's like Gabriel's organs are not doing well and they're infected and they're going to continue to shut down but there's no medicine so he's going to go find some weed for Father Gabriel like that's basically what I got from it <laughs> oh, <laughs> I mean like you, really that's you, what I got from Easter it Easter medicine is weed <laughs> well it just seemed no, well he's I think he also said herbs <laughs> yeah I could have oh, okay. sworn, oh, sworn that he also said herbs and I was like so we're there now that's, and a green that's, light bulb lit above your head 
like, <laughs> that's what you thought. You know, I, I, you know, it's funny how I, I, I didn't even think that, but now it's <laughs> like the only thing I'm thinking of right now. <laughs> it's like, and if that is know. the case, I would be like, well, here we have a situation where we have the sanctuary that apparently has Eastern medicine, herbs, and weed, and essential air. So, <laughs> I what mean, a place to be! The sanctuary. It's called the sanctuary. <laughs> it's called the sanctuary. <laughs> Wow. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't know. You knew. <laughs> I very intuitive. I try. I do my best. That's why we do a podcast. Exactly. That's that's the, that's the way I'm summing this up. Yep. Uh, but yeah. Oh, it, one important thing that he mentions uh, when Carson's out of the room to Father Gabriel, and you know, Car- Gabriel's trying to basically chat him up, telling telling him that like you know you got to have faith. You know, right. God has a plan, and and yeah. and and Eugene just kind of fires back right away. Like even if I wanted to, I couldn't even take the good doctor out because if mm-hmm. I'm supposed to put on all those guts to smuggle him out, I'm just gonna get just as sick as you, and I don't want to die. Yeah. You know, where so many people have gone horizontal, I'm still vertical. So yeah. it's that whole thing. And that's a that's a very good point because the truth is that he could he could probably leave whenever he wanted to by just employing the same routine. But we're starting to see that it may have worked in the beginning, the whole guts thing. But I mm-hmm. think now this is one of those things that they can't chance. It's like one more danger that the walkers pose. Yeah, this, this concept now. And I also wonder if it has anything to do with uh, the episode where um, all the Kingdom Knights were killed. At the end, we see that there was some sort of radioactive waste or something where oh. we had those like walkers go through that lake or whatever. I wonder oh. if that has anything to do. With that makes a lot of back. sense. Yeah. Okay. So it, Oregon shutdown. That's mm-hmm. that's kind of like typical of radiation. Like everything starts to kind of not liquefy, but really right. just it can't function anymore. You get cell death and radioactivity. Because, because otherwise, I feel like kind of showing this sort of radio radioactive sort of waste thing like i just feel like not for you know for lack of a better term would be a waste <laughs> to kind of you know show this and then sort of like oh you know it's there there happened they happen to be going through a lake of radioactive waste it's like well maybe maybe there's something to that maybe you know it is the case that some of these walkers have gone through this and you know they, they're beyond the fact that it's walker guts that are already bad but maybe it's to another level yeah. you know because of that so well, i will i will say for some the people that'll get snarky and say oh you know it, they were stuck in that little toxic pit you know a toxic stream they couldn't get out and it's true i mean i guess to a certain extent but like i mean you never know where that stream's going to go down they could have right. just kept following the stream yeah you know it's shiny they they might do it yeah, <laughs> so i mean it could have i i just kind of feel that it's not a, a point to just kind of throw away i feel like potentially that could be part of the reason why this time around Father Gabriel's having the reaction that he's having. Yeah, it was it was it's such an extreme and sudden reaction too. It, it yeah. kind of took hold of him fairly quickly. Very very quick. It, yeah, it, by, it, it it happened very quickly. Yeah, by the time he was at, Negan was out of the shower, Gabriel was in shivers. <laughs> yeah, so pretty much. Yeah, yeah. So I you know that hadn't occurred to me. Points to Carol. Yeah, I gotta Thanks. give it to you. <laughs> ding dong. I try. Ding. Well, I should have a little bell. <laughs> should just carry around a little bell. A just little in general. Bell, like, ding. <laughs> That means I did something right. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna order one off Amazon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I will. Two, two I'm gonna use shit, it, bitch. Yep. I got Prime. <laughs> I'm gonna have that thing. It's gonna be ready. <laughs> well, it is the season, right? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, it, we kind of leave off that scene with. Gabriel just telling him as he kind of collapses a little bit that you know you'll know what to do when the time when the you know what the right thing to do is when it comes you know you'll right. you'll see it when you see it you'll you'll just do it yep. you know just keep your keep your eyes open basically that's what so. the good man says you know, and the very next scene, I think we see Eugene spinning his wheels. Try, um, actually, no, I'm sorry. Let me back up. Uh, we do see him in his room kind of thinking about the situation. And Tanya basically asks him for his boombox. Yes. I was very annoyed with this at first. And then <laughs> the scene at first. Um, do tell. Explain why. But I will say one thing. When I watched it the second time, I realized the significance of it because of all these little mechanics, all these little tells yeah. about how 
how the, the the savior the saviors really are. And Tanya is really just kind of like a living, like I mentioned before, she's kind of like a living reminder of how it is here. You oh, know, yeah. is, is this what you want to save? And she kind of just says it. Oh yeah, she she's she's very very like straight with him about basically like you had the opportunity to do something about this situation and yeah. you didn't. You looked for yourself. Right, right. But you know, of course, we're watching the scene at first. That first thought, we're like, who does this bitch think she is? <laughs> What are you doing, girl? There are people, there are like dead things outside your door and you care about a boom box. Hey, this is what you know, annoyed me the most. You know? I know. Like, priorities, right? Right. Exactly. You know, and well, this is what you care about. In my mind, I kind of just figured like, well, because the other uh, savior, neck tattoo girl, I don't know her name. Oh, yeah. I wish I, I wish I knew her name because I know we've seen her before, but. We have, but I do not remember her name. You know, she, she tells um, Eugene that the sheep thinks that they have like another day to tops yeah. based on how it's looking so maybe yeah maybe tanya's just like you know what i'm just gonna listen to some music and <laughs> just that's it that's as good as it's gonna get yeah this is my role <clears throat> this yeah. is what i do Mm-hmm. But, you know, on second glance, it's kind of like, well, just to explain the scene a little bit more, uh, she asked him about the boombox and she's there with the wine. Uh, the deal that they struck is basically one bottle of wine uh, before and one bottle after. She has it in her hand. She kind of thinks that he's already done with it. Uh, he's not. He wants it from her anyway. And he admits that he kind of needs the giggle juice to kind of sleep. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and it's this whole scene where she's really reminding him that he, yeah, like you said, he could could have he could have done something about the saviors before this could have this happened yes. and there's a lot to talk about here because as you and I have broken down these episodes we've already been on board with Rick's plan you know i, I still think that even back then like had they known what they known every about the saviors all along, Rick's plan would have been the only way to go. You yeah. gotta convince these people that 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 the saviors can't really offer the kind of safety that they say they can. You know, right. and then yeah. you know convince them that there's another way. Um, so my strong inclination about Tanya is that she's been wrong two times now. You know, she's wrong now, and she was wrong back then to try to get ne- uh, Eugene to knock off Negan. Ne- Negan. Negan. So uh, that's my strongest inclination. Inclination, but there's some. Something about this episode, the way Negan is kind of saying you're the second most important person here and how and how she's basically kind of saying you're smart enough. You you may have been smart enough to actually be able to hold this place together, convince these people that there's another way on your own. And I'm not 100 percent convinced of that, but there's a part of me that thinks that what if, though, what if Eugene kind of came into his own? What if he looked just like he was Dr. Eugene Porter with Abraham and Rosita? Could he have? maybe convinced Simon, Gavin, Regina, Dwight that things could be better, you know? Part of me thinks, okay, these people would eat him alive. They would yeah. eat each other in a power vacuum to try to be top dog and then and in the end at the end of the day as these things go, the whole system would collapse, you know? In right. the struggle for power, all these workers would they, it would just downstream travel to the workers. The workers workers would probably rise up and it would be done. And you start to see that really Negan, I mean as I as I follow this logically, Negan is practically the only person that's kind of keeping this all together. Oh, one yeah. way or the other. You know, the way he does it seems to work. Yeah. Even though it's not a way to live. No, it's not a way to live. But I mean, there is something to be said for the fact that he is, he has managed to keep his people in line. I mean, in Rick's part, you know, he's got people on his side basically going on all these random renegade missions and not listening to his orders. <laughs> on the other hand, Negan yep. seems to kind of keep his people in line like there and I mean and there's something to be said about the fact that he's able to keep people in line even with the dire situation that they're in because at the end of the day they're closed in I mean obviously this is before you know the Daryl ramps the rants the truck into the wall and all of that but you know before that I mean they were basically trapped inside with walkers heavily surrounding them running low on resources not necessarily sure what they were going to do and you know you didn't have anybody turn on me at all they they kind of are still looking to him for like guidance what do we do you know but um right we only have faith in you that's where yes they don't have faith in like the lieutenants or anything like that they only have faith in him yeah well i think for the most part i think it's it should be understood at this point that negan has cultivated these knights yeah to a point where if he's not there i think he knows that he's made them ruthless enough to actually 
be detrimental if he was not there. Right. You know, like, like, oh, I did such a good job. But like, at the end of the day, there's a there's a double edged sword here. You know, I, right. I've raised I've raised a bunch of wolves among sheep. And if if the shepherd isn't there, you know, the wolves are going to attack the sheep, you know, yeah. or each other, you know, to do alpha dog. So it's just very, it's very trepidation, which kind of further reinforces the point that they, Eugene is not the guy, you know, he would right. never have been the guy. And so what Tanya says is, as although it's kind of like you could have done something and maybe that's the takeaway here. You could have done something, but you didn't. It kind of reinforces the idea that Father Gabriel is basically saying is that you should do something, you know, do the right thing, you know, right. He doesn't tell him to do. That's another thing to know is that as much as Father Gabriel says he should take Carson out to the hilltop or back to the hilltop, mm -hmm. he doesn't. And he says this at first. At the end of the day, he just says, you know, just do the right thing. Do what's right. And, right. and I think that's probably the best advice he's been given, you know, yeah. like between Dwight, between Tanya. That's probably the best advice he could probably take. And yeah. you know, credit to Gabriel for that, actually, because it gets yeah. in his head. It's the only thing yeah, that seems does. to get in his head. It Tanya does doesn't really head. get into his head. But yeah, and, and he seems to fight Dwight on not doing anything, you know, right. but with Gabriel, he kind of pauses. You know, there's this there's yeah. this look of I don't know, which right. is you, you don't really see with Eugene. He kind of just jumps to the answer. He yeah. seems to he yeah. seems to sit, make everybody think like he knows everything but when we know that he really doesn't yeah so oh yeah <laughs> Egan's place. no uh, what about so, the scene with um dwight and eugene on top of the um of the uh on the roof of the sanctuary oh yeah well yeah we've we've uh, got we've gotten all the way like even when we saw him take the uh I noticed that when we saw him fixing the boombox, that scene, what what I didn't notice, what you might not have noticed is he already had the kite plans on his desk. I actually paused oh, there. He? Yeah, it was really cool. Like, he already seemed to have had plans an for idea. the kite. Yeah, yeah, he already had an idea. Yeah. And he just kind well, of put then, them all together. And then he and we see him go into, I don't know what area was it was of the sanctuary, but he found the coffin that Sasha was in and got the iPad. Oh, not iPad, I'm sorry. iPod that was um, in there. And iPod and... 1, I think. <laughs> It was a pretty old iPod. Yeah, really I think was. it was the first one. How did that thing still have a charge? <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm nitpicking here, but it's yeah. the magic of television. <laughs> the magic of television. Just just suspend your belief. Just suspend it right now. A lot of editing in post. Yes. <laughs> a lot of CG. <laughs> yeah, for uh, sure. Maybe the whole thing wasn't real. Maybe it wasn't really an iPod One. It was just uh, it was just a, a box that they CG'd an iPod One over. Well, we have to talk about our thoughts on the helicopter that magically has not shown up again. Ooh, yeah, that's a good point. You know. Let's take a, a break to talk about that because where did that come from if it wasn't from the junkyard, right? I don't know. I do not know. I I, mean, I um I, I feel like it has to come up in the mid-season finale. You can't just show a black helicopter overhead and then it's like, okay, well, we're not going to talk about it anymore until later. And so oh, you yeah. can't do that. I like that you reminded me of that. That's that's because, yeah, because I kind of forgot about it with, in all the hubbub and I assumed that it was the junkyard gang, but I didn't really, I like calling them that, by the way. But yeah, yeah I... <laughs> Good description. It, it's a softer tone, you know. It's like yeah. eh, trash hipsters. Uh, I I called them the dumpsters for a while mm -hmm. uh, in my head because I didn't say it out loud. Um, and I was just like, ah, the junkyard gang. Eh, they're yeah. a groovy bunch of people who really annoy me. Um, but people. but yeah, you're right. It's 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 probably a very important thing to bring up because they're out there somewhere, and Heath is out there somewhere. <laughs> yeah, yeah, they're all out uh, there somewhere in the woods. Yeah, exactly. So. <sighs> They, I mean, they did mention a flyer, so I'm they not did. really, so really I sure. Wonder, what that I wonder if that's what that means. I don't know if that if that's what it is. It's like if they have access to a helicopter, but that's so strange. I mean, it's possible. I mean, it could be something that's controlled by the saviors, and you know, they they'll they use, they'll use it if necessary to basically rain down on you know unsuspecting enemies, but. I don't know. I was just like, that helicopter has to come up. Has to. Yeah. Well, it could be a group that we're entirely unaware of, too. That would be crazy. You know, and, and, and the Savers seem to have a hold on them as well. And maybe it's one of those situations where they don't want to use, have to use it unless they really have to, because then they will have to, they feel like they owe them. Maybe this group is on shaky ground with them. It's the only right. thing I could really think of. Yeah. 
because you only just reminded me now that that thing exists and it's obviously something we haven't seen on the grounds we haven't seen at any of the stations Mm -hmm. so it's out there and wherever it came from it did not come from any of those satellite stations did not come from the sanctuary so it's it's worth it's worth kind of thinking of at least for a little bit like knowing that it's there and it's out there and it could actually do some damage yeah or be entirely third party and we don't know so nuts but yeah, it's this whole can I tell thing. You, can I tell you what, side tangent what I want that mean? helicopter to be? Like well, yeah, I, it, that would be it would be more suitable for the end of the show because you know I'm always with my eye on the prize of like well, how is this thing gonna end? In my mind, <laughs> the end of the show period, the series yes. finale. Yes, exactly. Oh, In God. my mind. <laughs> I would love for that black helicopter to be filled with soldiers from another country altogether, like not from the continent of like the Americas at all. Like oh, I would love it to be a situation in my mind. Mm-hmm. I would love to find out that this whole zombie apocalyptic epidemic is has only affected like the U.S., Canada, oh. like neighboring countries, but other countries have not, and we've all been quarantined. Wow, that's what I want. Like I a chemical assault? That. Maybe I don't know. Like I just want to, I just want to see that. Like it's just us. Other parts of the world are living just fine. <laughs> you know, I okay. So I'll tell you one thing. I know you haven't watched Fear the Walking Dead, but I do know that at least this part of the hemisphere, the you know United States, but you've got Mexico, you've got South right. America, you've got I don't know about Canada. But but they do mention because they are on the ocean for a little while. So they're trying to get um, radio waves of, on what's happening around the world or not right, around, the world, right. but around their vicinity. But just, yeah. Mm-hmm. So you do know that at least the the West, you know, the Western mm-hmm. part of the hemisphere has has been affected. I don't right. know about the rest of the world, but I do know that that it has affected more than just the United States or North America, let's just say. Right. Because in my mind. Right. I mean, because the reason that I, I thought it's that. Your theory, though. I do think it's. I think think that i don't think that's where it would end though in my mind i'd be like no i want to know more now no it would be an intriguing possibility of like where do you go now like that's the thing i find it intriguing because the whole zombie lore of this show is the idea of like everybody's infected every single person is infected with what with what turns you doesn't matter whether you're bit or not as soon as you you pass away it's like you will turn so it makes it gives off the impression that it's some sort of like i mean they've never gone into it obviously but almost like some sort of government vaccine or something because for everybody to have it already in them it's almost as if something that's administered for everyone to have that in them right um which isn't necessarily the case in all countries that's things specific to certain regions and certain areas and certain countries it wouldn't be you know everywhere so for that reason it's like i feel like it would be so jarring for like to see a helicopter with just normal people (laughs) just normal just normal soldiers you know just because other parts of the country have been living just fine because the u.s has just gone off their rocker you know, not wow. trying to get political or anything. But wow. <laughs> Are you not? <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. But yeah, the, the idea of the idea of a chemically engineered biological weapon is 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 very intriguing to me now. Yeah. Or you know, uh, when we're I don't know if you ever watched the show Revolution. Uh, no. Which, which channel is that on? It was it was it was it showed a few years ago. It, I think it only lasted a season plus. Mm-hmm. It, but it was basically surrounded around the idea of what would happen to the United States without power period okay Okay. and it it all comes down to a a computer and that has found a way to put something in the air that causes electrical signals to not be able to transfer Mm. so it it, it was designed to be a weapon that somehow misfired in the lab and you know you and you find out later on that it was was somebody had a hand in that and and the whole thing but it's it does kind of the same thing like the united states does kind of devolve and and you realize that it's this weird they, they kind of form this almost like Negan kind of empire led mm-hmm. by this one person who kind of rose up and took over and enforced his will on everybody. But it's, it's, it's similar in that, in that effect, you know, mm-hmm. and, and, you know, it's not only the United States that is affected here, but it was the entire world too, which is very interesting. You know, that people just try to find safe Harbor around the world, you know, and still away from this one guy, Madison, I think is a lot of, a lot of uh, colonial uh, names like Madison and uh, Jeff, Jefferson and Jackson, like all these character yeah. names. So just interesting. kind of interesting how that, you know, how that, that plans out. I forgot why I even mentioned this, but it's just because we were t- 
<laughs> we, I, it's, I blame myself. It's all my fault. I, I, I was like, side tangent, black helicopter. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Side tangent. There are helicopters that, because that runs off of uh, uh, combustion. So, okay. you know, it, it's, it, oh, no, I'm sorry. They they find out little pockets of how to get electricity to work. And so that really kind of turns it on its head. Like, who has the power? The, oh, the person that can wield electricity. You know, it's so it's really, really strange. Uh, I mean, I'd recommend watching it anyway. But, but you know, to get back to the to the story, it's just the idea that, okay, you, I mean, you have this, you have this, this element that's out there that we don't know about. And right. it's it could come up at any time. And... I mean, it can go any. I think we're going to see, we're going to know about it either. I think we're going to know about it in this finale, or this mid season so. finale. I There's just so no too. way you can keep that thing up in the air for that long. Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, I want to talk about the coffin though, uh, Sasha in the coffin because yeah. I I want to. That was a your... really jarring moment, like when that that was, that moment kind of like I, I I jumped a little bit. I was like, whoop! <laughs> I was like, forgot about that. Yeah, and I was kind of looking at Eugene's face as he experiences that, you know, that right. moment. Yeah, you know, as yeah. He's remembering, and yeah. I don't think he, it's just a matter of him being scared. I think he's he's kind of thinking of what you know. Am I by clinging to these people? Am I betraying people that have made genuine sacrifices? I mean, mm-hmm. I. I gave this woman a pill that would kill herself. I could yeah. never do that. Right. You know, I- yeah. That the level of bravery that he's seen from that he's witnessed from Rick's group. I mean, Sasha, Glenn, Abraham. I mean, these are people that have demonstrated enormous bravery in very very dire situations. Right. Which she's, that Eugene, which she's witnessed. Yeah. Which Eugene could never do. I mean, he knows that he and he flat out admits it. He he doesn't try to be what some but he's not. He flat out admits that he's not brave. He's not that person. He's small. He's a small person. Right. <laughs> and he's just interested in self-preservation above all else. Yeah. And the more you look at this episode, you start to see several things playing out and, and trying to exert pressure on him from all sides. You have these reminders of what the saviors are that do affect him. He does. He is affected by this. And we'll get to what I think affects him in a way that we don't expect later on but more than anything you get the burnt faces you get the the negan's wives you get the way these workers are living but you also get reminders of bravery you get these reminders of sasha you get these reminders of gabriel trying to tell him and it does affect him it affects him it it affects him almost in kind of like a negative way also like like you know okay so fine you know i'm small you know okay i get it you know i'm small but then you see that as a result of this he kind of starts to change his actions and one of those things is when he's on the roof and trying to um, manipulate the the kite flyer with the with the iPod one, uh, and you see him defy Dwight, something that I don't think we would have ever seen him do. Yeah, yeah, We've seen was... him try to do brave things, like especially in the in, like in the bullet. I don't I don't know if it was in the Bullet Factory, but it's somewhere. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but never to the level of facing uh, like this guy had death. a gun to your head. <laughs> yeah, I mean he's not a he's not an unmenacing character. No, you know no. Dwight. He killed. Uh, uh, he killed Tara's girlfriend. I, I wish I remember her name. She's a terrific Denise. actress. Yeah, Denise. Thank you. She's yeah. a terrific actress too. If you've ever seen um, Nurse uh, Nurse Jackie, oh, she's, she's on there too. Nurse Jackie? Oh, okay. she, she's terrific. Um, yeah. But anyway, but like, so no, he was, knows that was a very precarious situation. I mean, honestly, I was watching it from my perspective, and I kind of wasn't sure what was going to happen. I was like, I really wasn't sure. Because Eugene, I mean, Eugene's an important character, but at the same time, I wouldn't necessarily, I wouldn't necess, I would not have necessarily been shocked if Dwight would have shot him. I, I was, right, I was right. kind of like, oh God, this could, this could happen. Um, so you know, I w- and obviously he doesn't. He shoots the, his his drone <laughs> that he made. And um, but yeah, that was like a lot of bravery on the part of Eugene to basically kind of say, yeah, you have a gun to my head, but I'm going to still do this anyway. Yeah. Yeah. I think I think and maybe that was see. And that's the thing. Maybe that was his one act of doing the right thing. Like, you know, as much as we try to criticize maybe Eugene for clinging to the saviors, there's something to be said about his desire. The way he buys in is not the same way that the upper echelon buys in. You see Simon and he's kind of he's not power hungry, but he certainly 
takes advantage of his position of power. He kind of relishes yeah. in it, right? Oh, you have yeah. Gavin who enjoys the seat of power, even yeah. though it comes with kind of like, oh, grunt, do I have to do this? Which is kind of like, shitty because if you think about he's like, he's, yeah, he's like, like those grisly upper management guys that just hates his job, but you know, but it pays really well. But isn't that so. like the epitome of privilege too? Like that, and not to get into this arena, but like, just like, dude, dude you enjoy like the cr- a crazy amount of privileges because of what you're right. doing. Just, yeah. You know what? Take the mantle. Just stop acting like you're annoyed by everything. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so annoyed by this guy. Yeah. Like, like no, clearly, I hear you. Like, in, in, while, while other people out in the world, let's say, are suffering, and, and even the people, the workers that, right, that, can't, that aren't that even touch you. Yeah. It's yeah. like, dude, just be thankful, you know? Yeah. It could be <laughs> a lot worse. Yeah. And Regina, who's obviously bloodthirsty. Very uh, much so. And then you have Dwight, who's kind of living as kind of a lap dog. Uh, yeah. And so, you know, and just to see Eugene come about embracing this from the standpoint of, I get you. Like, I need. Or at least Negan, I get you. I get why you're doing what you're doing, why you've built the right. structure, because I, I see right. what you're doing. I see that you're trying to give people purpose, you know, even right. crappy people, you know? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, you know? I and, think so. And you do care about people in your own way, you know? So I'm going to try to live this ethos. I'm going to try to embrace it from where I'm standing and the way I, I want to contribute, you know? And, and Negan gives right. him, enables him to do that, you know? He yeah. really kind of sees where he's coming from, where yeah, Eugene's he, coming from is what I'm saying. He basically gives him him like some more rope and it's like sure here you go like he he's basically very much you know uh, satiating his uh his ego he's he's feeding into his ego he's he's doing every all the things that that are basically further convincing eugene that he made the right decision let's even talk about negan just for a second because it's suddenly occurring to me that his affinity for for eugene negan's affinity for eugene Mm -hmm. may actually be genuine i mean if you really think about it we had this episode where we explored explored Negan's philosophy when it comes to people and he must be so sick and tired of people just buying in to be safe you know ah, sure you know and and Eugene is doing essentially the same thing but but he's I contributing think- something different and I think that's what makes it so interesting to him like somebody like Eugene because he has a well of knowledge that he knows that if properly harnessed, can be incredibly effective for, you know, the saviors. Um, Whereas other people are just sort of like, I'll give you whatever you need for protection. Here's my firstborn daughter, you know, like, I don't, you know, I mean, it's kind of like that, you know, whereas like Eugene has something literally, some something tangible to contribute. But even, but even more than that, what I, what I'm thinking is that I think Negan sees that Eugene understands him, whereas his lieutenants probably don't. His yeah, lieutenants they just fall prob- in line. Yeah, they fall in line and they, they emulate as well. They emulate his, his, you know, nutsack holding bravado, take, you know, bat to the desk, mm-hmm. iron to the face kind of mentality. They don't get it. And I think Negan appreciates the fact that Eugene gets him also. Right. Like Eugene, without even having a confessional with Father Gabriel, I think Eugene gets him. And and he says as much. Eugene, Eugene says as much. We're saviors. We we save. You right. know, and it's yeah. it's just saying that that like it's almost like a, a proud father of of a son, you know, like yeah. I don't have to be this way with him, which must mm-hmm. be so refreshing for him. Like I don't don't have to lead this guy. I don't have to manipulate this guy as much. I just have yep. to tap into something he already gets when it, with this whole thing. Ah. So maybe it starts to get me thinking that it's not all an act. Like maybe he is being an encouraging father figure to, to mm-hmm. Eugene. Like mm-hmm. I, you know, like stand up, you know, like when, even the thing where he says stand up and then shake my hand, like mm-hmm. he's teaching his son how to properly <laughs> shake someone's hand, you know, like, yeah. because, you know, this is how you do it, son. This is how you do it with people that you respect. Yeah, and I'm going to teach Eugene you how to do that. that. That scene alone, that little thing just really yeah. really got me like in a way like like oh it started getting me thinking like is 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 this not genuine because at first i was like oh he's full of shit mm-hmm. <laughs> like <laughs> the more i think about it he's like oh wait it must be nice to have somebody who gets it you know, that it gets has what to I'm be comforting to without having to explain it exactly yeah i do like the idea that like ne- that eugene has to mention that negan isn't the, di- the dying type you know yes i think that that's a little um that's definitely a little breadcrumb for people to you know to follow in terms of of that comment of like Negan, what is it? Egan, Negan ain't the dying type. Um, yeah, I mean, I obviously am a comic book reader, so Ooh. I come from a different perspective, clearly. But yeah, Negan is a very 
pivotal, important character. So he isn't a character that you're just going to kill off. It's it's not that cut and dry. It's and we're it's starting to see that too. You know, like, yeah, because I can't even imagine. To be honest, I can't even imagine a world, or not a world, but I can't imagine how the sanctuary would not lose all of these people without yeah. Negan. No, and it absolutely. seems to me that they have. It's like you you're damned if you do and you're damned if you don't. But you know, the only thing that I, the positive thing that I, the only positive thing I could see come out of this is that they reach an accord of some kind because there's right. just no way these people would be able to be cool in this world without him or at no. least ease into a world with him in it like wean them off of exactly. Negan in the way he is so that's yeah. the only thing I can think of really because it just doesn't make sense to me and it, it's yeah. it's something that Tanya does not get you know like right. it's not that simple yeah it's exactly. something that Daryl and Daryl and uh, Terrell they don't get they just no. don't get it no they're they're impulsive yeah yeah so um let's see oh and okay reminding Dwight that was it was it Eugene that bit Dwight's junk yes it was okay was this at the bullet factory or something yes it was outside of the armory so the two times that the only two times that Eugene has shown a shred of bravery is towards Dwight <gasps> well towards the saviors <laughs> because there was that time that he bit Dwight's Dwight. junk <laughs> But there was also his one shining moment when, you know, they were trying to get Maggie to the doctor and he drove the RV to distract the saviors so that they can kind of keep going on their mission to bring uh, Maggie over to to the doctor. That Um, is a good point. Obviously, we all know how that ended, but that was like his moment. And I think he mentioned it to to Sasha that, you know, he drove, he rode off in the sunset with this bravery and, you know, thinking he was going to be a hero and he was fully prepared at that point to to die because he felt like he was going out with like a purpose. But, you know, obviously he got, got captured. It didn't happen. And, you know, I think seeing the way that two people like Abraham and Glenn were were murdered in front of him, I think added that extra layer of, no, man, I'm not going to go down that road. Self-preservation at all costs. Yeah. This is what happens. Yeah. And yeah. in, in that way, Negan wins, you know? Right. Yeah. Oh, boy. But he does get it. You know, like, he's seen it, but he still gets it. He does the math. You know, he doesn't think of these things emotionally. Like, he, no. I mean, not to the extent that we do, but. He, no, very he logically. Calculus. Yeah. Yes. It all has to make sense. Yeah. And he is quite mad. Uh, he is quite mad, not only after Dwight shoots the kite. I mean, first of all, the bullets start flying and, the, you know, the sniper bullets start flying when the garbage truck starts to ram the sanctuary but so he has no choice but to kind of flee he can't really even process the fact that Dwight foiled his plans to save the saviors so right but when he starts seeing the bodies fall uh, as the walkers start to take over the factory floor he is pissed yeah he's livid he's absolutely livid he's shaking his one true act of bravery like there's little bouts of defiance but his one true clean act of of bravery to try to save people and something that he's never done before for. Yeah. And I think that he takes his post very seriously. And so basically in his mind, you know, he, this is an opportunity for him to make a contribution and save these people um, rather than just being killed by these, you know, zombies. Um, I'd love to hear what Eugene thinks about like this whole, the, the, the whole, you know, situation when, you know, Daryl and, and Tara drove the, the, the oh. truck into the, um, into the sanctuary. I wonder. Like his reaction, you mean? I wonder, like, I wonder if he's, what does he think about it? I mean, does he think that Rick and the, t- and, and, and the group are, are, are soulless, heartless killers? Um, mm. To just kind of want to, you know, open it up to the floodgates, you know, of zombies? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure yeah, we'll I'm find out. Too. I'm sure we'll find out more. Oh, and that, and you know, I don't blame you for leaving it there, but it's you are drawing a good point. Like he does mention things like Father Gabriel was partially responsible for uh, Rick's crew rolling up in the sanctuary and, and getting the walkers all there. So he does exhibit a sense of I don't. I guess it's not hatred per se, but he's like I I know who the guilty party is, you know. Right. And anybody yes. involved in that is responsible too. I don't know if he really genuinely feels that way, but I know that he has to be that. 
that way. And yes, it's not be that way. Yeah. Yeah. It's not necessarily a phony thing because I think he kind of believes it. Like I kind of want I'm invested in my safety here, so I have to kind of act accordingly. But right. I think I think he does feel for Sasha. I do I think he does feel for Rick and his crew, but I do think that there may a there may be a part of it that he needs to reconcile with, you know? Yeah. yeah and it, and you know, having his last his only real act of bravery, his true pure form of bravery be thwarted, it's just a kick in the teeth after Father Gabriel's speech, you know, just to have that happen to him. It's I mean, any one of us would feel that way. Like, you know, you're trying to do a good thing and then somebody spits in your face. Not maybe literally, but it's just kind of like it's the worst feeling to have. You know, I try to oh, do yeah. good, but I it just it doesn't pan it out. And it's yeah. it's not what people tell you that will happen when you do a good thing. Right. So you know. It's not what they say. Karma they doesn't apparently... happen. The apocalypse. <laughs> the apocalypse changes everything. Changed everything. Um, I'll tell you what. You know, in, in life, I've been through scenarios like that where you try to do the right thing and then you get kicked in the teeth. It's just terrible. Not oh, literally, because yeah. that sounds horrible. That's horrible. But, uh, <laughs> but yeah, you know, I think I think we've all hit that in some f- gradient. You oh know, yeah. At, at one time in our lives. Um. But yeah, it's so the next real scene we see Eugene in after he visits Father Gabriel and unloads his sack of. Yeah. You know, Venom. Yeah. Um, we see Negan and Eugene, and they're talking about making bullets. Mm-hmm. And it seems to me that they've already have a conversation about either getting him to 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 the factory or getting the factory to him. Either way, he's on board, you know. And uh, he says, and then Negan says, "How does it feel to save people?" And he says, "It feels great." <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say. I think he says it feels great. Yeah, and I believe it too. Like I think part of me sure. believes that he's. But yeah, it's part of me that the only thing that makes me think that some of this is an act is the very next part of that scene is when Dwight pops in as he's about to rat him out mm. and the one th- the one thing that I noticed was that Dwight was on the side so Dwight was so Eugene was on Dwight's left side mm-hmm. and the left side of his face is burnt and there's a lot of little tells throughout the episode like the burnt faces of the people the, the guy in the front you Dwight's yeah. face mentioning the burnt flesh and then Tanya and then all the horrible things that the, I mean, even Dr. Carson himself mm. he was part of Hilltop he was Maggie's doctor he became Maggie's doctor essentially the reason why they went there in the first place and they just took him and he saw the original doctor get thrown into the oven he knows oh, what that, yeah. what that's about that you know? is true so you have all these scattered reminders and then and then seeing dwight's face his face of defeat i think something happened something finally maybe clicked all right you know so- and, I, and i know that in the very next scene we see him kind of boozing out and and maybe <laughs> the only thing that i can think of because i'm trying to reconcile the next scene with what currently happened mm-hmm. and then what just happened beforehand it feels great to save people um the only thing I could think of is that he in the at the end of the day he follows Dwight's advice, you know, yeah. which is to do nothing because all he can seem to do is drink. Right. He he is seriously drowning his sorrows. He's feeling his feelings and he doesn't want to do that. Yeah. And it, it does make me wonder what's it like it's like you said, you know, before we started the show, it's I'm totally comfortable with seeing what happens next because it can go anywhere from here. There we have oh, yeah. signs we have signs where he can do this, that or the other thing. You know, the other thing being <laughs> nothing. Right. Um and you know, I think Definitely taking Dr. Carson to the hilltop is off the table, but I can definitely say that he might be just taking Dwight's advice at the end of the day because Dwight seems to know, you know, if as soon as I stick my neck out, you know, I'll just get it chopped off somehow or some way. Mm-hmm. You know, as soon as I help something, somebody else suffers. As soon as I try to help both people, you know, I'm the one who's going to end up being su- end up suffering. So it's, you know, it, it just, it makes me feel for him, you know, and like I shouldn't, but because he... You almost it's like the Father Gabriel thing, you know, you you want to wonder how somebody like that survived this long, you know, and but at the same time, the show seems to drop little things that make you wonder, like when you see Gregory whimpering, you feel for him in a weird way, even though he's such an asshole. Yeah, but you do. Like, yeah, I do. Very uncomfortable. It's hard to watch somebody suffering, even though it's I, I in my opinion, and maybe that's just the t- kind of person that I am. I just it's hard to see somebody suffering, even though you feel like they may not have killed people, yeah, you know, yeah, that yeah. kind of thing. But it, but they are such assholes. But at the same time, 
you know, when you see them suffering it and really like, like in, you know, feeling emotional turmoil, it's, it's, it's not easy to watch. Mm. And, I, and I think the show does a good job of illustrating that. So when we see all the examples of which Eugene really tries to be a contributing factor and see him f- essentially fail, mm. you know, you do feel for him. And, and, and I think he is maybe, I think maybe that's one of the key reasons why, why he doesn't rat out Dwight is that because maybe he's right, you know, maybe, yeah do nothing you know really is the best thing yeah. you know I think even though i know that that's not gonna doesn't know. he doesn't know at that point he isn't what he doesn't know at that point um in terms of i'm sorry i lost my train of thought for a second i was <laughs> <laughs> I, I was thinking about um in terms of dwight and Eugene and just basically that you just don't know in terms of Eugene what direction things are going to go into like I don't like I don't know what direction Eugene is going to go into and I could say the same thing for Dwight I mean I'm pretty convinced that Dwight is on is, is on the side of Team Grimes let's say Team Grimes you say Team Grimes Team Grimes but, yeah I think he's fully indoctrinated too but he's another one that also like I I guess he he is ready to die if you, it Dwight, you say? To it. Dwight. Really? Okay. Well, I think so because at that moment when you have um oh, wait, pause for have... a second. Mm-hmm. Uh you 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 sound funny. Oh, hold on one second. Better? Yeah, much better. Okay, perfect. What I was going to say is that there is that point where um Eugene is basically talking to Negan, touting all the things that, like, oh well, you know, I got a, He's got a plan for how to get them out of there, how to get rid of the walkers or whatever. And you know, Negan's just, you know, eating it up. <laughs> he's he's basically eating it up, you know, and just sort of like, God, you know, you are magnificent, and like, man, and this and whatever. And um, you know, and 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 you get the impression that Eugene is ready to basically offer the information on Dwight, like ready right, to, right, right. you know, and, you know, the, the lieutenants come in and you can get the impression that Dwight was kind of waiting for it to happen. He was waiting for Eugene to do it, you know, like he kind of like resigned himself that this was, that this is a possibility. And of course, Eugene doesn't do it, you know, he, he can't do it, you know, because Eugene's not brave. Um, but, um, and you can tell that Negan sort of like knows that there must have been something else that he was going to say, you know, where he's like, it, it, all right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it, it all actually makes me think that, <clears throat> Because I know we were talking about it before, but his one pure act of bravery is defying Dwight and, and trying to save people. But I think maybe part of me thinks that having a taste of bravery and defying things has given him a sense of courage. You know, maybe it's it causes him to suffer. But I think that I don't think I mean, obviously, I know I, I still think he wants to survive. But I think maybe he's had a taste for bravery. Yeah. You know, and, and he didn't get hurt from it. Right. So maybe that's not the case. Maybe it's not a matter of cowardice, but maybe there's like I can be this way without throwing somebody under the bus right like, so you know I really do think that which is why I agree with you that there, there's really this is probably the most unknown I, I've ever felt about where this could go because there, yeah. they, you have these three options and none of them are are great and but none of them there's no real indicator where this is going to go because no. it could go in any other direction. Could go yeah, any yeah. direction which I I like I, I I like the fact that it's keeping us on our toes like I don't necessarily know what direction they're going to go with this. Yeah, it's not just vague to be vague. There's genuine. There's a genuine investment in any of these three options. Yeah. But you know what else? What else really gets me is that it's something I noticed while well, for after watching the show a second time is that the only time he mentioned uh, something cranks his shaft, quote unquote, is so the first time he mentioned it in the in this episode was surviving, and right. the second time he mentions it is when he covers for Dwight fixing the in- intercom system, mm. and he says, "Oh, that kind." thing really cranks my shaft it does make me think that there's some sort of connection to that you know like you wouldn't say like i know that even a writer wouldn't say something like that twice in the same episode if there wasn't some sort of significance right fixing the intercom and and that it could be something very small like Mm -hmm. you know sparing you and sparing you from negan right really cranks my shaft you know that sort of thing yeah it could mean that he has he has a plan he doesn't like Mm -hmm. that he has to do it which which explains the next scene like i don't like that i have to do this plan because it's hard yeah you know i don't want to have to either kill people or have to throw it or it's hard because in order to save everybody i have to do something that's very hard and it may even mean self-sacrifice yeah so because we have the sauce the the imagery of 
with Sasha, you know? So right. there are so many places where this can go. And it may even be a situation where, where Eugene is realizing that he has to sacrifice himself in order to, uh, to get all these parties to not kill each other. There, yeah. There's so many places where this can go just simply because of these little illusions, you know? So, oh, yeah. you know, it's, it's, you know, it's they have done a very good job and not just one of those brick wall kind of jobs where they just throw a brick wall in front of something and say oh you're not going to know what happens next no this right. it, it's like they give you so many options that you're like not sure and they're genuine ways out and they're, you know, and they're genuine they're completely potential potent, they're completely feasible completely yeah and and part of part of it like it, it's it's funny because you want to you want to believe in the hype that that Eugene is buying you know the the whole saviors and Negan and and committing to that cult because that seems to be the obvious choice he really does right. seem to want to save people and he does seem to cling to Negan right yeah but part of me is like oh that's yeah it's got to be misdirection you know <laughs> like yeah. he, you know he's he's really doing this but he doesn't really want to do it but blah 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 so it, it's going to turn out that he wants to do something awful you know and like he's, he's oh he's really with rick but like that's i don't think it's that simple and i no, think I the think show it's illustrates right. that it's not that simple hence no. the boot and rally scene <laughs> you know right it is not that simple yeah yeah so i i really think that's a, a, like the most perfect place to leave this off on you know this yeah. whole eugene centric episode uh part of the episode because right. we we do have to touch on the tarot part at least yeah, I mean that was just stupid. I mean, I, I, I'm <laughs> no because I mean just stop talking about it because it makes me mad. <laughs> so that whole piece was just. I mean, you want to talk about believable and not believable. Ooh, I okay. just have such a hard time reconciling the thought process and decision making that led them to this position. You have your fearless leader, unless well, we know that Daryl and Rick are not seeing eye to eye. We know that. Right. We know that they've come to blows over it. They are in very different places on what they believe the best course of action is. And obviously, Daryl's kind of through listening to any sort of direction and orders. He's taking matters into his own hands. Right. But it's sort of like we've gone down this road before. Right. And haven't we learned that this sort of impulsive behavior, this reckless sort of behavior, usually doesn't amount to a whole lot of success? And a couple times uh, over, too. Yes. And I mean, I'm glad that Rosita and Michonne came to their senses. But at the same time, I was like, you guys drove two hours to see the sanctuary and that was it. You know, you just wanted to go and see it. That seems like a kind of not the most logical thing to do, but OK. Yeah. You know. <laughs> But um, Daryl and Tara just deciding to go in there. And Morgan, too. Let's not forget that Morgan was there as sniper for them. Yeah, I would so like to he... start with that because it, it, it is kind of cool. To me, it's cool that Morgan is smart enough to know himself. Yes. Enough so that he can still participate. Mm -hmm. I like the fact that he stays purposely far away from everybody to not be on the ground killing people because he's a fierce machine. Yes. You know, it, it is kind of a comment not to get political a little bit. I don't I don't even think it's a political commentary, but there is something to be to be said about guns in general. Right. Um, it's that a gun isn't the same as, as stabbing somebody or, or, or inflicting no. harm on somebody in person. It's an instant no. it, it can be an instant kill machine. It is. And, it's it's something that I mean, and that's why a lot of people just don't necessarily um respect I, I guess is the best way to just describe it, respect people that fight using a gun as a weapon because right. it's very easy to sit behind a tree or a rock and then just kind of pull out a gun and just fire at will you know like that's a very easy thing to do right and take However, somebody's wallet or something <laughs> right, yeah sure exactly but you know the idea of being martial and being um equipped to fight and defend yourself i mean we've seen our main characters being able to physically fight, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. We've always seen Rick do it, we've seen Michonne do it, we've seen um, Maggie do it, we've seen Carol do it, we've seen, you know, Jesus do it. Like, I mean, we've seen, yeah, we see for the most part, most of our big characters have been able, are able to to hold their own, basically. Right. With or um, without. With or without guns, it doesn't matter. Um, and that's, yeah, that, that is the truth. That and especially Morgan, true. too. Like, more yeah. Morgan, Morgan is a specific example, just like Jesus, because he yeah. uses guns and he uses martial arts or Aikido. Right. Mm -hmm. so. And he and Morgan isn't necessarily the kind of character that always has a gun on them. Like that's not no. his way. That is not his way. 
Um, I mean, it is now <laughs> again. Yeah, it is now. Yeah, but, but but it's it is the idea that he can he's he he knows he can't be on the ground. Right. He knows he can't be facing people up close and personal because he will just be a killing machine. Right. But I think part of him needs to distance himself literally by sure. sniping. Mm-hmm. You know, to in order to defend at the very least. Like, okay, I'm gonna just make sure this gets done because I don't want to be that person again. There's right. just something beautiful about that. You know. Yeah. And, you know, it, to know that he isn't broken you know no. there's a malfunction <laughs> yes the, the, there's definitely a malfunction but it's you do see him and he does seem to be um not sober but like uh sober-minded at the very least like yeah he gets it he knows what's wrong with him and he he works to correct it he understands and i mean and he said it in that episode with jesus and i think it was such a good line when he said it that um you know i i may not be um i may not be all right but i'm not wrong exactly exactly and, right and i think that that was such an awesome line because it's true i mean he definitely has his demons that he's dealing with and he isn't necessarily all there but he's not necessarily wrong in his thought process because you know in right. reality he's on the same page as Tara he's on the same page as Daryl like he's not alone in his thinking yeah for sure yeah. it's just that he's not equipped that like, he may not be as equipped as Tara and Daryl right. to do the thing which is a, a unique and I didn't realize that the, at the time how unique that he was how uniquely self-aware he was in that moment like to because I assumed he was just gone for a, a, a several episodes because right. it seems like oh I need to be gone gone you know right at least exactly for a while you know and but but to see him in that next, not in the next episode, but the, the episode after tells me, oh, that statement was more self-aware than than I I understood then, at first. Right. You know? And it's kind yeah. of beautiful, like to see yeah. somebody try to, which is kind of like if you think about comparing Morgan, let's say with Carol, because right. Carol was having a really, really hard time. Carol, yes. look, I'm not, and I, I, I don't want people to think that I shit on, ta- on Carol because, because yeah. just speaking for myself, mm-hmm. I know that sometimes it takes me a while to kind of come around to certain ideas or certain systems. You know, so it takes me a little while to adopt sure. them. You know, I need to get the rhythms and, you know, I'm like, a, I'm a lot like a Carol when it comes to getting over things. And Carol was not, out of the picture you, for a while. Are you not good with change? Because I am terrible with change. Yeah. I mean, in some ways I'm, I'm not good with change. Like in some ways I, I adopt to change really quickly. I sometimes embrace it and then go full into it. Like I, mm-hmm. I not only adopt change, but I embrace it and, mm-hmm. and really fully it up. But some things like it's like habits, right? Some sure. habits are hard to break for me and right. I have to adopt certain systems and they take a little while to, for me to acclimate to, but I, I yeah. work hard at it. And it, it's like, you know, to really kind of crystallize this idea is that you, in, in the past, you know, when I've broken up with a, a girlfriend, let's say, right. it takes me a very long time to grieve. And that's mm. just my way. And I accept it because if, because not accepting it and being really self-flagellating about it is harmful. And I learned that after a while. Yeah. Like, oh, it's not, it's not that I'm, you know, broken. I am I'm more, you know, this is just the way I am. I just, I mourn. It takes me a little while. I get it out of my system. I learn something about myself after a while. I start picking, uh, picking the good memories. And that's, that's just me. And so, and we do see the contrast between Carol and Morgan because Carol has a really, really hard, she just needs to be alone for a long time, you know, and then maybe she can re-enter a different way, which is ideal. I I think people need to do that. And I think having Morgan snap back so quickly, at least Mm -hmm. is uniquely like, it shows us that all the training he did with Eastman, it's not gone. And that's no. something that I was very concerned about. You know, it's yes. not reverted to this. Anim- yeah, there are triggers. You can't get over these things in a blink of an eye. But he has the tools to be able to come back. And I was surprised. I'm actually very surprised that we're focusing that much on Morgan here. Mm-hmm. But there is so much to be said about this idea, you know, oh, yeah. in, in, in our waking life, you know? Yeah. I mean, I think he he's, he's his belief system is not complete. complete completely out the door for sure you know like he isn't like he hasn't thrown his beliefs his, his belief system to the wayside in light of everything that's going on like no you know but i think is it is it difficult sure yeah oh god yeah but you know what he he kind of he knows himself enough to know what yes. to do to know what to stay away from and i think that's awesome yeah that's knowing yourself but getting back to the crew though it's to to the tarot crew which is what i'm going to call it just the way it is <laughs> 
<laughs> Makes sense. I think you do, you know, as much as I agree with you completely. Like, and I think that the writers kind of write it that way. Yeah. Like they, they want you to be like, what are you doing? Stop exactly. it. You know, like there is something oh, yeah. to be said about like, they make it very obvious too. Like, it's oh, like, yeah. what are you doing? Why are you putting yourselves in yeah. harm's way? It's, it's, right. it's the classic wolf mm-hmm. behind, you know, behind you thing. You're like, oh, well, yeah. why don't you see it? Why but, you are know, you running like, into the wall, into the woods? Yeah, exactly. Look behind you. Like they don't yeah. know. No. Um, but as much as we like, it's a good thing that you have to kind of appreciate how Rosita <laughs> as something like she has learned from this situation yes you know it was hard for her to say what she said you know like Mm -hmm. because she is look she is the mama to the abraham papa to eugene's son thing like she was fierce man she was capable and fierce Mm -hmm. and is ruthless and she wants to protect everybody she wants to be a mama bear you know she she went to to the sanctuary with sasha she did that she tried to take out negan with that bullet she got punished for that she kept trying yeah Yeah, she she did. did not stop Nope. So to to have her admit that is very yeah. powerful. You it know, is. not powerful From enough her. to stop Dara and Tara, Dara, Tara and Dara. I'm going to say Terrell. Sorry. Terrell. Um, but it was powerful enough for Michonne. You oh, know, yeah. Some, you have to kind of appreciate that that the writers left a little room for sanity, you know, like yes. or to, for bravery, let's say. Mm-hmm. Even. Yeah. Yeah. I'm glad that they I'm glad that they went that route because I was when this whole scene was unfolding, I just thought to myself, especially in the case of Rosita, it's like. We've been down this road. You went down this road with Sasha. Are we really going to do this again? So I'm glad that she kind of came to her senses. Michonne came to her senses. And, you know, Daryl did what they did. Honestly, I, I feel like Daryl was a little apprehensive about doing this. But I think Tara egged him on. He seemed to be sitting yeah. kind of like in the in that van, like, uh, like just a, a little apprehensive about what he was about to do. Yeah, and you, you kind of see that actually, uh, and I didn't even write this down, but I thought I was going to it. I like, yeah, I won't write it down. But when Michonne actually leaves, when she actually yeah. backs out in the end, mm-hmm. um, and she says some really cool things about that as well. Uh, yeah. She says, you know, I know that, you know, I originally wanted to come here because I wanted to see that, that things are working. And she realized that I don't get to decide that, you know, like mm-hmm. I don't have control of that. You know, all right. I can hope is that it's going to work. But now yeah. that I'm here, I see that things are working now. The, right. What you're doing right now could jeopardize that. Yeah. And, I, and like you said, it does make him pause. And what really makes me think it makes him pause it's this little one thing and i don't even know if it's actually a real thing kind of like mm-hmm. when morgan flipped out <laughs> and tara made that face it could be an actor flub mm-hmm. but as she's leaving the truck and she closes the door daryl mm-hmm. kind of flinches a little bit because he's staring out into space and he's mm. you know you know he kind of it shows it shows to me that a he's listening to her yeah. and he's he is kind of he's letting her go he's not giving yeah. her any, any guff about it you yeah. know? No, no, no. but but then as she slams the door he kind of ju- jumps just a little bit to make mm-hmm. me think that like he she has reached him in a way yeah. you know even though they end up committing what they commit you yeah. know he's he's committed you know but mm-hmm. he you know it does make me think it, it reached him in a, in a way and maybe that might play out later like mm-hmm. i i something to me something tells me that dwight and daryl are going to butt heads Tara is going to get so. involved, and I literally wrote Tara is like literally the devil on Daryl's shoulder. She's yes, the little, little the little sprite, not the sprite, but the little uh, yeah, she's the, the, she's the little yeah, jumping around with a pitchfork, you know, yeah. eager, smiling. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that she's like, doing. Come this. on, we can do it. Like, don't listen to them. We got this. <laughs> Yeah, and you <laughs> come on. So, we'll just poke him in the tuchus, you know, like <laughs> with my little punch fork. I, I wanted to shake Tara in this oh episode. I, I was, <sighs> I, I almost like it, not even shake. Like when you get beyond that, and you're like almost afraid of her because she's so enthralled with this plan. And yeah, you know, like, and my I'm, thing I'm a little like, like backing away slowly. <laughs> yeah, and then, I mean, it's like, come on, Daryl. I'm like, you, you have been through some battles, through some serious stuff. I'm like, Tara has not. Tara has seen a fraction of what you you've seen you know she hasn't been in the midst of of the kind of battles with like the governor and with the freaking termites and you know and now you know this and whatever it's like you know you've been in some stuff like uh, you've had to you've had to kind of cut your brother off and then see that he kind of saved you in the end that sort of thing or you know it's I mean, it's you've gone through some serious stuff. Whereas Tara, I'm like, I I just find her so flighty in terms of her personality that I'm just like, it's like one of those people that 
you know, like if I was in oh, the Rick Grimes team, a character take down by Carol. <laughs> I'm sorry. If I was in the Rick Grimes team, I feel like we'd be in Alexandria hanging around and Tara comes over and says hi and starts talking. And in your head, you should be thinking, why are you still here? How are you still here? You know, you know it's like, but you know what? It made me think of something watching it the second time around. And there's two things. There's two operating principles. One I just thought of now, but another which I wrote down and I'll, let me get to the one I wrote down first. It, you, you have to kind of take into account a couple of things. One is that yes, Denise was just senselessly taken out by Dwight. Right. I get that. Okay. I was pretty sure. That's part of it. The second part of that first part is that she was totally duped by the governor. And I'm glad you mentioned him. Yeah, you know? she was. She was and, very and much. And there's you know, and you know how you know how it is when you've been duped duped by yeah. somebody. Yeah. You feel deceived. Awful. Yeah. You feel like you could have done something about it. You could mm -hmm. not have un imagined how much you were taken for a ride yeah. and and the way it was done was probably the most horrible thing the, mo the thing that probably stuck with her the most yeah. and probably the reason why she misses glenn the most and and it was the idea that this who is this guy that cuts off this old defenseless yeah. man's head yeah you know so it made me flash to that moment and and it made me think if i was tara i would probably be thinking the same way i'm just sick and tired of oh, making the wrong mistakes yeah being tricked being um you know behind the curve you yeah. know not feeling like I can hold my own and and, yeah. and and be able to contribute. And the second part of this analysis is that, the analysis juice, is that, are you sick of it yet? Is yeah. that <laughs> it, it allows you to flip back to Eugene. Right. You know, and how these these two contrasting characters are really trying to play these strengths. You know, yeah. Tara is trying to embrace this idea of I'm just sick and tired of stay, sitting on my ass being tricked, you know, being right. not being contributing, you know, trying to fit this mold. And, and I'm really I really have to start embracing a little bit of this brutality and not be so soft because people are dying. You know, right. like, I just want to get it. And, and all these people are thinking the same thing, but they're going about it. They're, they're, they're different. In very, ways. very different, different ways. Yeah. Yeah. But she embraces embraces this one thing which is to just I just need to get it done. Daryl's on board he just needs to get it done too for yeah. different reasons obviously right. you know So and they're doing it for themselves yeah. you know, a little bit you know Tara has her own reasons like she's doing it because of this Daryl's doing it because oh. it's payback you know Michonne's doing it right. because she just wants Rick to be safe in the future to be set in stone Rosita is she's got too many reasons you right. know yeah. so you know it's 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 just fascinating to see these, these two comparisons between between Tara and uh, sorry not Tara uh, so yeah Tara and Eugene like seeing the, the desire to be a contributing member but also to be to be brave you know like yeah. to, to not be duped anymore to not live under heel you know and right she's 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 carving her own path whereas Eugene is just embracing the path that's been laid out in front of him so right. it's just interesting to see those two things together oh yeah for sure yeah well, and as we know, Daryl and Tara, Tarot, drive that truck into the sanctuary and all hell breaks loose. Woo boy. Yeah. Oh, I mean, yeah. let's talk about just that for now because... <laughs> Because what do you think, like, okay, we see the scene where they kind of enter the place and we know yes. that they're kind of limited to the bottom floor because the stairs right. are piled up with too many walker bodies, right? Yes. But do you think that they, look, okay, on the one hand, I'll tell you what I feel right off the bat. Okay. And that's, that's I do feel like at the end of the day, in spite of all the, us trying to say, stop doing this, mm -hmm. I feel like part of me thinks that it's a net good. Like, yeah, it's it's stupid mm -hmm. and, and what they do is reckless. But I think part of me thinks that had they not done it, it, they would not have first of all they would not have known that this plan would work right i don't think i don't think the workers are harmed but what i do think is that it really brought home it, it really accelerated the plan right you know it really solidified the plan there's a part of me that is worried that it's it ruined it in some ways like maybe the garbage truck crashing into the the factory floor accelerate also accelerated negan's escape to the the bullet making factory let's say yeah it, it gave him a means to do that and and that's my speculation. Right. That is totally my speculation. It's my like speculation. that literally almost a double-edged sword. You know? It, yeah. It, yeah, I mean, you may have accelerated the process, but you also gave Negan an out. You gave them an opening to escape, and I fully believe that they did. And Glad we're on the same page. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't happen this, all the time. <laughs> it doesn't happen all the time, but we are in line. I, I don't want to get into what I think until we get more towards the end and, and talk more predictions because um, for the next episode, because I, I do have my suspicions on what I think happened because obviously you know in the end we see Rick 
looking and seeing the aftermath of what happened. He, you know, he sees the the truck uh, crashed oh, into yeah. the, the wall, and everything is empty. Everybody's right. gone. The walkers are gone. There's no people around. He what he must no- be thinking in that moment too. Well, you oh, know, yeah. let's let's pause for a second and start from the top of that because mm-hmm. you know we see Rick with the garbage. We see Rick in the um in the shipping container. I finally figured mm-hmm. out the word. Yes. <laughs> the way, remember I was struggling with it last week. Yes, and um, I was like oh the thing with the walls and it's metal. I, was, I, was like, I get it. I know what you're talking about. Yeah, no, well, I'm glad. I mean, yeah, you do. But at the time, I didn't really know language at 2 a.m. Um, yeah. but so he's in the shipping container. Um, we have to appreciate how strange these people are too they they really literally just take him out to take a couple of old timey photos with uh of him so bizarre. before you yes. know and then the sketches to sculpt him later um, yeah for after <laughs> for after after what yeah like after <laughs> sculpt you so strange people are so strange and, and it's i don't kind understand. of weird. i'm kind of like liking it in a weird way now i i don't i don't because know it's why it's so bizarre because it's so bizarre like yeah. it's 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 past the point of like you know slightly of understanding witty. even yeah no it makes no sense I mean, it's, we're it, not that far removed from like the apocalypse that there's no comprehension of the English language anymore. Like, it just makes no sense. I want these people to be former members of the Church of Scientology for some reason. <laughs> like, That'd be great. L. Ron Hubbardists or something. That would be great. That I would love awesome. for something like that. It's like, it's, yes. And exactly. how, how, how willing would, would you be to accept that at that point? Like, okay, I get it now. It's, and then it, I'd be it's like, fine. yep. Oh, yeah. I'm on then, board. Because then I'd feel like, okay, now we have some sort of inkling. Because otherwise, <laughs> it's like, how are all these people dressed in black garb and talking like this? I need to understand why. This is like <laughs> this is like the first cultish group that we've seen, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's that you really, literally, there's nobody in the show that has been remotely that that way. That way. At all. Except for the level. wolves. Let's just, let's, uh, we have to mention the wolves too. The because wolves, the wolves had that, are their the own wo- way. Yeah, but they had their own way and they basically there they they went in and they stormed in and they killed people and they come to get things but they at least spoke in in, in sentences like it just made it, it just made more sense That's the true. wolves the wolves i understood these people don't understand wow don't. but you know actually so here's here's the question of the day carol mm-hmm. if you had to be locked in the room with jadis or locked in the room with the wolves who, who would you rather be locked in the room with i guess jadis <laughs> see I, I'm, I'm gonna guess jadis yeah you gotta you gotta you gotta, you gotta pick your uh yeah. lesser of two evils here man yeah she's like as much odd. as you get brutality because of this show because it teaches you what brutality is yes. um i would offer strange over brutality I guess. yeah for sure i'll take yeah. strange uh, i'll take strange i'll take comic relief for one alex for 100 <sighs> god so so strange yeah. but yes he's in the hot box in the beginning of the episode yeah daryl style <laughs> you know i i love that callback i love that that he's being treated practically the same way. It, literally, the door, the the door of the trailer had the A on it. Yeah, just like uh, Daryl had the A on it. It's yeah. very, it's very weird. It's very. I don't know what they're doing. Are, are they emulating? Are they playing a copycat game? And, yeah, you know, I, I, know, I know. I kind of had this theory last week about how they're the the bigger threat. Right. But maybe I'll scale it back a little. I still think they're a threat. I think they're formidable. Mm-hmm. They're obviously yeah. formidable. You know, they have mm-hmm. like a, a different kind of strength right. you know in in character and in 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 the their ability to move in and out of situations sure. and have a hive mind almost mm-hmm. they're like they're almost leading by committee too if you've noticed yes it's you very know, weird like, like jadis isn't necessarily kind of the leader they do kind of right. take it you know yeah. they each yeah. have kind of an input mm-hmm. you know in it's large part strange. she is kind of leading I, I just noticed noticed hints of like them not having too much of a central leadership like no. this guy chimes in that guy chimes in you know this guy guy says you should do that like doesn't say anything but he kind of alludes that oh uh, hold on a second you know like mm-hmm. i'm doing this like i'm still sketching you know that sort of you know so i i feel like she does they do listen to her listen as if they talk but they do yeah. kind of 
talk, they kind of pay attention to her moves because they do respect mm-hmm. her. But I mm-hmm. think it strikes me that they they might be leading a little bit by committee. Like some yeah. of these guys, like even the guy that said uh, something about dreams the other week. Oh yeah. It, like when I looked at him and I listened to him, like oh, could this guy be the secret leader, the, the leader above mm-hmm. her? Because he kind of spoke like that. He spoke like he was some sage of of some kind, mm-hmm. you know. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I it's just I thought it was no, noteworthy. The, the strangeness in in this group. There's I'm just still still trying to figure them out and, and yeah. things these little things kind of fascinate me it is it's interesting yeah it's yeah. just very bizarre so uh time for after <laughs> I guess this is what they meant by after using uh, yeah. what I call beta Winston. Yeah, I was going to say Winslow 2.0. Oh, is it Winslow? I, I, I wrote down Winston, I guess, yeah. But it Winslow, beta Winslow. Like yeah. what they thought of before Winslow, before Rick took down Winslow. <laughs> so strange. Yeah, because it, it's kind of like a minor version of him. Mm-hmm. Like pro, proto. Sorry, I should have said, said proto Winslow. <laughs> <You know>, like <laughs> We thought of this idea first, so we'll just, we might as well trot him out now. Why um, not? Yeah, he's, he's more mobile than than Pitt Winslow. So, yes. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, I th- find it fascinating. First of all, when they first open the door to the, mm-hmm. uh, the shipping container, Rick still gives them a chance, you mm-hmm. know, which again, so fascinating. He, he, he could have just said anything, you know, like, he could have he could have painted this a completely different way. Yeah. He could have been begging for his life for all I know, but he does it then and he does it still after he defeats Proto Winslow, you know, and, yeah. and all these people, like almost getting shot by Jadis. Yeah. You know, he still gives them an out, you know? He still does. And it, it does say something about how desperate he is for his people. Like, I think yeah. that moment um, with baby daddy and Gracie, it does kind of go back to that, like how much he snapped out of it and how, how committed he is to not having people die again under yeah. his watch, you know? And not only that, but to be less indiscriminate because he could have killed all those people, by the way. Yeah. All those people he kind of knocked out and took down. Mm-hmm. He could have mm-hmm. killed Jadis too and just forced, yeah. forced the rest of them to kind of come to reason. Yeah. You know, but he, he Pretty didn't. much, no. And they would have respected it too. Like he could have, he could have done that and gotten them to come along. I'm firmly convinced that you could have just taken Jadis out of the equation and gotten them to come along. Yeah. You know? No, I agree. But there is something to be said about him giving them a chance. And, yeah. and it kind of goes back to the plan. The, all the plan hinges on the idea that we're going to starve them out. We're not going to necessarily kill all of them. Right. You know, that's not what a new world is going to bring about. You know, we right. need to kind of give them a chance. You know. Yeah. I agree. I wholeheartedly agree. Yeah. But uh yeah, so um she does say join you, what then? You know, and, mm-hmm. and here there's comes this, the bargaining. Yeah, here comes the what do I get out of it sort of thing. Oh Jesus. Um wow. and it's kind of amazing to me that she agrees to a fourth of the take, you know, like which is also interesting because you have Alexandria Hilltop Kingdom and now you have the junkyard gang. Mm-hmm. So it would be Jock. <laughs> <laughs> Stop getting in my jack, Carol. Ah, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah, well, you know, I, I expect as much. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, yeah, it's 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 nice to see that <laughs> that Rick's patience paid off. Let's just put it that way. Yes, if she could have just done it all over again, and I would have been right, and I didn't want to be right about the junkyard gang being the bigger threat. But yeah, you know, there's the, thank God. Um, but then yeah, it, it's like you were about to say before. It's they they agree to a small party to check out to survey the damage to see if they're really all going to come together. Right, and they get to one lookout post and they see that at the lookout post he. Uh, one of the one of the guys is hanging upside down and being eaten by walkers and yeah. he's trying to get people on the walkie and no go nobody's answering yeah. and that worries me the most actually even even more than him seeing the sanctuary mm-hmm. empty i just want want to know what you think about that because about the, about the about the fact that he couldn't get through to anybody on the walkie talkies yeah because that seems to be more relevant to me than than the sanctuary. yeah on, yeah i mean well i think it's all connected i mean i feel like the concern there is like you know what happened to those snipers i mean obviously we see one of them clearly was you know being eaten by like walkers um but that's kind of like the the question it's like what happened yeah, you know like we guy? who got to these people like what did they run did the, because we don't know how long it how long of time transpired between the time that daryl and tara drove the truck into the sanctuary and, and when rick happened. comes right and when rick comes and sees the aftermath we don't know how much time passed in Dude. between those two points so what happened? I don't know. Like, I, I mean, you're, you're like, on the same page because I wrote that down as well. Like, 
oh, this could be one of those things where he'd been captured. He'd been in there for like at least a day plus. Who and knows? we know that all this stuff happened like not within a day, but like uh, they, the walkers had been there at least a night, yeah. um, you know, starving them out and stuff like right. that. Yeah. So, yeah. So we were, we're on the same page. Like we don't know how many days slash hours plus right. uh, he's been there. And so it yeah. makes me think that something must have happened between the time he was captured and the time this all the because he could be coming out uh, a full day or half a day after yeah. they, uh, they ran the, the garbage truck. And that's a really interesting point because I'll be curious to see if like I'd be curious to see time wise how does that work like how it'd, it'd be very interesting and, and I've thought about this too because you know we've seen like you know it's no secret there's a lot of like still images from like the mid-season finale and things like that and yeah. we don't yeah, we know see, that that much right we don't personally I don't see too many images of Rick in the, in oh, the no. photos I don't so it makes yeah. me wonder from a timing perspective oh, shoot. maybe maybe Rick was in that um in that uh, shipping container and for you know i i mean i don't know maybe a day let's say but maybe um, longer you're saying or or who knows but maybe like maybe a lot transpired during that time that he was there that mm. the save you know that that um uh eugene enacted his plan whatever that right. plan was to get you know negan and maybe some of the lieutenants out of harm's way and some of the workers and all of that and, and lead the herd away somehow i don't know how um but maybe all that happened and, you know, whatever sort of counterattack, because look, there's going to be a counterattack. Like, let's <laughs> like, no, not trying to spoil anything, but let's be realistic. You know, it's like there will be some sort of pushback for this. Yeah, and, and we he, did get a sneak peek of that, too. We did. We did get like, like there was, or a, hint there was of that. a hint of it. Yes. So, I mean, I wonder if all of that happens while Rick's in that storage container. And when he comes out, we're seeing the aftermath of whatever yeah. it was that happened. I wonder, because we don't know how much time really transpired, you know, at the point that he, he's, he sees this. I don't know. It, yeah, it'll be took, interesting to see. You took what I wrote down to actually another level. Like I, I had assumed the only amount of, I'd assumed, but I wasn't about to say it, but now I'm going to, is that the amount of time that passed was enough time for um, Negan to get Eugene to the factory. And mm -hmm. then, but not to get to Alexandria. That's mm -hmm. not what I was thinking. But now you're making me think that this is, this may be I'm, on post. I'm just throwing it out there because I, I, if I, if I think about like the still images that I've seen, I've seen a lot of images of almost every other person other than Rick. I, I think I've seen like maybe one photo of Rick and the way it makes it seem like is that Rick, I get the impression that the photo that I saw was more along the lines of Rick arriving at Alexandria, but everything that potentially happened has already happened. Um, so I don't know if he gets there in time for whatever it is that transpires. But I do believe that we're going to have an understanding of what this whole, what is it, let my mercy prevail uh, prevail above my wrath. Like, oh, I no, think that that no. teary I'd seen that in the flash in the in the first episode, I think we're going to see it. In, the the in flash the forward that we saw in the first episode. When one he's of them, all at least. Teary, yeah, the one where he's all teary eyed and, and says the whole, like, may my mercy per prevail over my wrath. I think that that's happening in this episode coming up. I oh, do. No. So I think that he is going to arrive and see something that he is, is is going to shake him to his core and while we're on the topic i'm gonna put it out there i'm gonna say it right now <laughs> i wish i had a bell i so uh -huh. wish i had a bell i'm gonna get one from amazon okay so okay. <laughs> No, I, here's what I'm saying. I feel that my prediction is that Eugene enacts his plan, gets them out of there. I think that they do go to Alexandria. I think that they, I, I personally think that they, they will bomb Alexandria. I think that they don't necessarily have the wow. weapons that they had, but I think that they might throw like grenades or something because- oh, like Eugene made grenades or something. Could be, because I mean, the images that I've seen, especially the ones at nighttime it looks like the there's like light on their faces and it almost mm. gives me the impression of almost like a fire like the like the like the light that you that would be reflected um a of a fire, fire yeah. so i i feel that 
Right. Yes. I feel like they may not have their weapons, but I think that they might, you know, concoct some sort of explosives because it can be done. And I mean, yeah. Eugene is one of those anarchist cookbook type guys that I'm sure yeah. he can <laughs> The if Jolly I ever Roger. saw one, if I ever saw one, you know, so it's like I'm sure, you know, he could probably come up with some sort of concoctions of explosives that they could use. So, I think that they do that, and I think that Rick doesn't arrive until the aftermath of when it's all said and done, and I think that we're going to see Judith and Carl dead. <gasps> Ooh, but see, I was but, thinking Judith, but but I don't. Okay, but here's the cat. But here's the caveat to it. I think that we're going to see. Judith and Carl dead, but I think that it's going to be a fake out, and Carl's not really going to be dead. Oh yeah, <laughs> but we're not going to. But we're not going to. Find, but we're not going to find out until February. <laughs> Ooh, that's basically so cruel. That's basically what I think they're gonna do. I think the aftermath will be that we'll see Carl and Judith laid out like as if they're dead, and I think Judith will be, and I think that Carl might survive. And we, but we won't know that until they come back in February. Hey, you know what the good news is? Mm-hmm. We'll see a baby Walker. Oh no, <laughs> no! Hey, you gotta take advantage oh. of it. You know, oh. Not a lot of babies in this world. Oh so. no, that would be so disturbing. <laughs> That would be, oh, stop it. No. So cruel. So cruel. so cruel. But no, that is, I'm, I'm, I have thought about it long and hard. I have studied the images. I have thought about this. And I am, that's what I'm going with. Because we know that they're like, the shocker, the moment is going to be so shocking, whatever. I think that that's what it is. I think that that's what it is. Because think are about it. There is no, <laughs> thank you. There is no other character death to me that would be like as shocking as rick's children i don't think so i I don't think that there's any other character gabriel dying is not a shocker like any of these other characters dying would not be some sort of like (gasps) right like but it's kind of shock yeah they're on their way out yeah i mean it's like it 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 wouldn't i mean it, it would be surprising but it wouldn't be you know shocking but I know that there are a lot of people that say, like, the you know, the shocking moment may not necessarily be a death. It may be the whole, where is this helicopter? What What is this helicopter about? That potentially could be the shocking, you know, portion too, which is... Oh, me, oh, my. Yeah. I, I'm hoping because it's like, I need to know more about that helicopter. And I, I really who do. knows if we are going to know more about that. I know. I'm hoping. And they could do that, by the way. They could just not have it. Oh, I know. That they would could. be an acceptable move. That, that they've well done respect. that before. They've done that before. I mean, we like, seen Heath yet. <laughs> we haven't seen Heath. Heath is the one flying the helicopter. <laughs> That's the surprise. <laughs> Heath is going to come in on a helicopter. Comes out That's in a full the... two button suit or whatever. And yeah, yeah. Three piece suit. Straight from the set of 24, ready to like. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Come in and save everybody. It's gonna be Heath. Oh, Heath is in the helicopter. So good. Oh yeah, that's the shocker. Uh, <laughs> I was working for the government the entire time. Working for the government, the government of Saudi Arabia the whole time. The whole time. Ah, <laughs> oh, that's that's it. And there's your crossover. <laughs> revolution with 24 <laughs> oh yeah with 24 my bad my bad <laughs> sorry i just started to bleed all these three things at once ah uh, yeah, yeah the government's turned off all electricity oh my god but yeah that's basically what i think i i sincerely like the more i think about it the more i think that rick may have been in that trailer for some time i don't know it's totally possible like wow. they, they like to play around with time like that sometimes you know yeah. so we don't necessarily know like this this further solidifies this whole tantric death thing because it because if judith and carl are the ones that are taken out it's it, it would be major it would be it a would huge be, blow it would this. be a huge huge blow it would be i mean and, and i mean like i said it's like i i do think that the judith death is very much on the table just because judith isn't alive in the comics at this point like right. she she already has been killed during the, the governor's raid on the prison so like at the end of the day like that's very much an option and in the case of carl i think it would be a fake out i think it would be a situation where we're left kind of hanging like oh my god is he dead too and then we find out maybe afterwards that you know that he did make it because i don't think that carl would be killed off i think that carl is way too of an important character to necessarily be killed off but i think the fact that rick repeats what sadiq said of the of of the line about mercy I just feel like it, it's that was a moment between him, Sadiq, and Carl. You know, 
yeah, so these, these three different types of characters. Yeah. You know, the, what is it? The, the in Dungeons and Dragons, it's the, uh, the, the good, good, the like bad, good and the bad, bad kind of yeah, characters. Yeah. I, I don't remember exactly what it is, but it's the, oh, the, uh, the rightful, the justice, the, the, oh, it's the, I'm going to edit this out. Don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> but it's the, um, oh, the justice good. I can't, I can't remember the exact word, but it's like these mixtures. You have these like mixtures of six different ty- type of archetypes yes. but the major three ones are the 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 rightful good the 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 wrongful good that kind of yes. thing yes. and like the wrongful wrong that kind of thing the, those are the major three that most right. people like to play right um yeah out of the six but yes. yeah it's it, you see the you see the different types and and it's ugh, the extremes yeah. but also the middle that rick tries to walk you know right he tries to maintain that line of, of fairness you know yeah. he, he tries to kind of of justice he was a sheriff you know but i i think that that something like that happening would be something that could shake him well that would obviously shake him to his core and and bring him to that to that point because i i feel like that's the other thing that i was reading that it's like oh it was death as, as shocking as glenn's i was like what other death could be as shocking as what happened with glenn i mean like that was you know pretty you know unforgettable no <laughs> that was not something that has that has been forgotten and won't yeah. be you yeah. know but in terms of like on that level of something that would really leave a lasting impression, I got to think that that would be it. Or as we're, as we're talking about it, the only other thing I could think of is that <clears throat> it would be more along the lines of like Carl, Carl actually losing that arm, you know, could after, be. after two threats, you know? Yeah, could and be. And that would really stick with Rick too. Oh, um, yeah. A- along oh, yeah. with Judith dying. Yeah, you know? no. Anything happening to his children would definitely be a huge blow. So even if it's some a situation like that where Carl isn't killed but severely injured oh yeah, yeah for sure morally injured, like yeah morally disfigured or whatever not morally that's wrong um but severely disfigured right and the thing is it's like the show has done those moments and and they've taken them from the comic fairly well like when they had the situation with the horde in Alexandria and um you know Sam <sighs> Like taking away a kid. I mean, they're not afraid to do that. No, but also in in the sense that, like, you know, when uh, um, Carl was having his little scuffle with the older brother, and you know, and and you All know, right. Michonne kills him, but you know, not in time before he shoots him, and you see Carl turn and you and turn around and you realize that he's been shot through the eye. And I remember, right. like, again, side tangent. There's a show on Bravo because you know I I do watch <laughs> horrible television also besides like wonderful scripts television but so but there was a show on Bravo called The People's Couch and it is the one of the best shows ever because all it is is basically watching people watching the same shows we watch on their couch and basically seeing their reaction that's all it is it's mm. like they basically have some different households and they're all watching the same program and they the same episode and yeah mm-hmm. and they just basically see the different reactions that these different households are having mm-hmm. um on on what they're watching and one of the one of the episodes was that they had like these few different households and they were watching that particular episode of the walking dead which i oh, think wow. it was like a mid-season i think when that happened that was a mid-season premiere or i don't know it was it was a it was one of the major episodes um when the whole horde thing happened and carl got shot in um in the eye and there was this one household that was hilarious because it was like a wife um it was a a wife, a father, and their teenage son. And yeah. and it happened, you know, like Carl gets shot in the eye and you see it and it's like <gasps> And like the son, the teenage son is like mouth open, like the wife puts her head in her hands and like the husband stands up and is like, that's it. I'm done with this. (laughs) I think that's how a lot of people uh, end their relationship with walking the walking dead. (laughs) That's what happens. Uh, The three different archetypal reactions. (laughs) Exactly. But that, but that was another moment that was like, yeah, that was one that was like, (gasps) like I remember sitting, because I had like, I read the comic, but I did not see it happening that they were going to do it. I did not see it happening. And when right. it did happen, I was like, oh, wow, they're going there. <laughs> like, yeah. I like I didn't necessarily, I didn't see it coming. I didn't. It was dramatic too. Like, the it was, was super quite dramatic. It was super dramatic, you know, the way that it was done. So 
I'm very curious to see how how they do this because I think you know they they've had some moments that have been obviously very dramatic, very impactful in the way that it's been done and the material of and the story of of exactly what they do, but the way that they do it too, um, because it doesn't have to be some kind of grotesque thing. It doesn't have to be about that. I mean, I right honestly even though even though when they, they shot Carl's eye out, it was particularly pronounced, and I think was, that was a I think that was a good thing. They, I don't think they should have brushed the fact that he got his uh, eye no. shot off out. No, I think it was, it, it wasn't over, to, the Glenn thing was grotesque. Like the, yeah. the Glenn death was, I, was grotesque, I could, but not, you know, yeah, it was beyond I could not pronounced. watch it. I could not watch that. I, I had a hard it. time, but I did I had watch a, it. It was a, it was very difficult to, to watch something like that. It was, it was painful, you know? And so that stuck with me for all the wrong reasons, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. And I'm sure, and I know a lot of people got rubbed the wrong way with it and, you know, all that. But, um, yeah, I think that there are ways to do things that are just really like, I mean, when Herschel was killed, I mean, God, everybody remembers that, you know, yeah. like that was, you know, huge. So the, there's, well, I'm curious to see yeah. what they do and how they do it. Yeah, it know? goes back to what you said before. It's uh, it, there's so many they've left it in in such a place that that it's 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 hard to speculate where they're going to go with next right. because there's too many directions, too many they've laid out paths. You know, it's one yes. thing to leave it unknown. Yes. But it's a whole other thing to kind of lay out different tracks that they can yes. chug their choo choo train over, you know, and 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 go that way. Yes. You know, it's 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 like this almost misdirection too because they may go in a completely different direction that we won't see coming. Coming. and mm-hmm. fuck you guys so yeah, i just said exactly. a curse word so now we have to put explicit lyrics in. <laughs> that's fine sometimes it has to be said all right i guess i can bleep it out but you never know how much you know, some, there. sometimes it has to be said you know i like I, I i try to be very good with my language when we when we have these podcasts but it's mm, <laughs> sometimes sometimes it's hard it can be that's tricky. why i'm here because then i'll do it for you <laughs> and it'll give me free reign. <laughs> exactly. You can just be you. But like, oh, he did like, it. Yeah, okay. Ah, get comfortable now. Awesome. Yeah, somebody but, did it for me. <laughs> yes. Broke the ice. You're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so actually, so I didn't write down any real sneak peeks because I didn't no. really see any except for in Talking Dead. And even then, it wasn't, it was just them in at, at Alexandria, I believe, right? Yeah. There are a few out, trailers you know? that are out right now. I think that yes, there's one with right. Maggie and G. Jesus, um, right. which kind of let's, gave let's you, talk about it. I mean, it gives you the same ominous kind of feeling as when Glenn was killed, because they did the same thing. The saviors had knocked down trees to basically block off the roads. It's the same, right. it's, it's right. their MO, which is why Maggie kind of immediately is, is pretty much aware that it's like, it's them. They, they, they are, they're, you know, that they're, they're retaliating they're back. Out. They're yeah. out, you know? And um, yeah, so it's like, I, it definitely gives you that kind of ominous sort of feeling that uh, something ain't right. Um, yeah, it's a callback and, and it's a it's terrifying a, one. It's a terrifying callback to that first episode last season. Um, so it's very, oof, that that's jarring. Now there's another trailer with Enid and Aaron. Okay, now, talk to me. Now, I'm interested. Is, Enid is always a wild card to me. Always a wild card to me oh, because no. I don't, not in a bad way, Not I, okay. I just don't know. I don't have her figured out quite yet and I don't know necessarily what um because i haven't seen i I haven't really like looked at the trailer in detail but from what i've seen it's her and aaron in the car and i think that they trade off driving and then she's driving she's in the driver's seat and i think that then she she takes a turn or something and says that she has something that they need or something but i don't know what that what that is i don't know what that (laughs) what what does that mean i don't know like what is what do you need i mean you need a lot but what so I, I don't know necessarily what all that's about. Yeah. Um, and then I think that the last trailer is at Alexandria. I think it has what? Like right. Carl and uh, Michonne um, at Negan Alexandria. At the gates. And Negan at the gates. Which I think we got a little bit of a sneak peek of that um, when they did the whole trailer during the summer at Comic-Con. Because I think that oh. they showed I think that they showed a very little sneak. Of, of, there was in that mishmash of different images. Um, they I think that at one point they showed like Alexandria at nighttime 
or as if you were looking through a peephole and you could see Negan like walking by, you know? So I think that that might, I think that that image is like the same one having to do with Negan at the gates, um, you know, uh, this time around. But I, and I think he says when he's at the gates, like, you know, to, if you don't let him in or open the gate, he's going to just freaking blow up Alexander. Yeah. So I do feel that they have some sort of weaponry. I do. I feel like they have explosives Mm. and I think they're going to use them. I do. Thanks, Eugene. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But this relates to having blood on his hands. Yeah. He will yeah. he will have blood on his hands. Like, I mean, if he in fact helps them, you know, be able to to replenish their their ammunition and get explosives, it's like that is on his his shoulders. That is his burden to carry. Like he he created that situation. So yeah, it's kind of like what I said in the episode before, and I alluded to this in the uh, the beginning of the show. Is that I did not want to be right about Eugene, but I I really do feel that he, unlike what you were saying about him in the comics, you know, yeah. having some bravery. I no, he he. This is a very big departure. Very big yeah, me, departure. Yeah, my feeling was that as a TV viewer, is that I I kind of thought he was going to lean in. This episode indicates that he was leaning in. Part of me was leaving the door open, mm-hmm. obviously with the whole letting Dwight go and right. maybe doing nothing you know like mm-hmm. uh, maybe end up doing nothing but yeah my feeling my gut is telling me that like there's just no way that like as much as Chris Harder really wants him to kind of turn around I just don't see that happening I don't like, see I, that I, I'm too clear eyed you know I, I don't see that happening I think that he is 100% Negan I don't think I, I think that is it is a big departure from the character in the comics and the and I think that's fine. I think it keeps it interesting to be honest oh, yeah. with you. You know? Oh yeah. So it's definitely an interesting turn to see well now what happens to Eugene. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well now he's what happens public with enemy the show? number one. Yeah. I mean he's public enemy number one, basically. Oh god. I mean hated, he's hated, hated by all ex- Alexandrians I mean, even further. <laughs> Poor Josh McDermott. He is hated oh by like. God. I mean, he oh gets God. like he gets hate mail. <laughs> like, he's so funny too. Like he's such a fun guy. He is such a funny guy. I feel so bad. I'm like, oh. He, well, I'm glad. Like Chris Hardwick always says, he's like, guys, this isn't a documentary. Like, do not. <laughs> this isn't a, a a true telling. You know. No. No. An, um, uh, historical fact. <laughs> yeah, I think he had to shut down his Twitter at a certain point. Like, oh my god, was, really? Shoot. Yeah, like he was I mean, just like getting bombarded with stuff. See, I think he should lean in. That's the thing. Like, you know, I, I know it's hard for people because when you're when you have the entire world right. throwing hate at you, yeah. I'm sure it's hard. But like, in right. my opinion, I think he really should lean in, and I think that would get people to back off a little bit. I, I think that. Well, yeah, I think you have to know how to approach it. Like, I think Jeffrey Dean. Morgan embraces it and he's oh, just God. sort of like his love for it too and Which, he's why loved- what's up with that <laughs> because I think he's a very charming villain he's, he's also very sick let's be honest no no comment <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I'm married too, so I can, I you know, know. I'm not dead, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're not dead from the waist down. You know what's up. I know. <laughs> but he's very, he's very charming. He's very, very charming. Yeah. I will true. leave it at that. <laughs> but, but no, it's like. You're too good like for he... me, Carol. You're too good. <laughs> I'll admit it, and I'm a guy, and I'm the heterosexual male, and I'll be good like, for you. Good he's for got you, some Daniel. swagger to him that I can he definitely does. dig. He does. He knows how to carry himself, and and it's funny because he's made the role him. He he's he's made the role um, suited to him, because yeah. I I've said it before. It's like I was very skeptical at first because oh, yeah. I knew what Negan looked like in the comics, and I knew what he was inspired of. You know who inspired the Negan character, right? No, no, I do not. Kirkman was a big. You remember Henry Rollins back in the day? Yeah. The metal that was his inspiration. Kirkman drew up Negan and drew, and designed Negan based off of Henry Lo- Rollins. That was wow. his inspiration. And you, if you look at images in the comic of Negan, you totally oh, see it. You totally oh, wow. see it to the point that. But the funny thing was that then you know they're bringing Negan to life. Henry Rollins is now, you know, older in acting. You know, he's he's <laughs> yeah. he's you know he's not just a metalhead anymore. Oh, so he no. tried for the role and he didn't get it. And he's like, "How did I not get the role that I was that was created based off of me?" I was <laughs> birthed to play. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, are you kidding me? I didn't you know, know that I, he tried out for the role. He's he's generally he like a really good guy. Yes. But I, I, but you know, yes. thinking about him, thinking about him, like I really can't see him playing that role. Like I can see him. It would have been a different. 
portrayal altogether. It. it would have been a different yeah. portrayal. That's the thing. Like, I think that Jeffrey Dean Morgan has taken that character and made it his own. And I think that Henry Rollins would have been great, but it would have been a very different, um, it would have been a, di- a very different um, interpretation of yeah. the character. And personally, I think, I think, look, Henry Rollins, for all his quirks, he's just a generally honest, he, he's true to, a true to himself kind of guy. Like, even with everything that he does, comedy, spoken word, uh, yeah. you know, all of the things that he does. So I just don't see him acting that way. I can see him being, cr- but him but the being thing cruel is, is hokey to me. The, the thing, in the Negan in the, in the comics was more of a brute force kind of guy. And, you know, with the leather jacket, the, the hair and everything, like, it, it, I, you, you Jeffrey Dean Morgan has made Negan to be like this very kind of charming, manipulative sort of like, you know, mind game sort of guy. Like he's not a a, a formidable figure in stature. You know what I right. mean? Like he's not some big dude. Like Henry Rollins is a big dude, you know, yeah. and like Negan in the comics is this big guy, you know, so it kind of, you know, from if you were to take straight from comic to screen, it definitely would have made sense to have somebody like Henry Rollins. So that's why at first I was like, really? Jeffrey Dean Morgan? Like, I was kind of like, hmm. But he's definitely made it his own. And I like his interpretation. Like, I like yeah. what he's done with it, you know? It's almost I, like, I, a, like a complete reinvention, right? Yes. Like, oh, it, yeah. that makes way more sense. It makes way more sense um, because a lot of the complaints that people have, which makes sense, is that, you know, you can't necessarily take certain things straight from the comics and put it onto screen and it's going to work. It just doesn't directly correlate that way. Like you have to kind of reinterpret it in a little bit of a different way to make it relevant, you know, yeah, or and, yeah. and make it believable. Right, you know? exactly. Like, as believable as it can be in a zombie apocalyptic show. <laughs> like, I mean, yeah. You know? it's, uh, yeah, yeah, suspension of disbelief, right? But right. <laughs> Exactly, but I have but to ask you. I have to ask you a question, though. Then, uh, because do you generally get the idea or the sense that the comics readers embrace this Negan on the TV I show? Now, I think now they do. I think at first you, they were. They didn't at first. I, I don't think at first. I think at first people were kind of like. Mm. I think that they were really excited to see the character, but they were a little apprehensive, and I think that at first, I, I don't think that the show did a great job in giving him a lot of good um, dialogue. I, I mean, I think that, you know, he came in, you know, he, he killed Glenn and Abraham. And then it was like, oh, you know, it set this like really somber tone. And then you have like, you know, these episodes where he's just kind of, you know, basically beating up on downtrodden Daryl and, and Rick. And it was just, you know, it, it was just a lot. I feel like he didn't start to really shine until you got these one-on-one episodes, like when he was when he had his time with Carl, or when he had his episode with um with, with Sasha, or or with Eugene. It's like when we had those one-on-one episodes, I think that's when he really sh- like really had an opportunity to shine. But when he had those episodes where he's like kind of in Alexandria and bossing everybody around, and like yeah, you know, like it was just a lot of posturing that was like okay, I get it. <laughs> mm. it, it felt a little excessive like okay i get it you're a jerk you're an asshole i get it you know I don't, it just felt too much especially because there were a lot of those episodes that were extended episodes there were numerous episodes that season that were like 90 minutes or whatever and it was just sort of like i don't need 90 minutes of this i didn't need 90 minutes of this yeah <laughs> of me biting my nails and having heart palpitations by the way yeah like this is too much you know yeah. so i think that now they've kind of and the certain things have become a running joke because he does this lean back thing a lot <laughs> and it's become a joke like he even said it it's like great. you know like he's he's like i don't know i did it a couple of times and it just kind of stuck and now like it's become like a running joke it's like negan and his lean back <laughs> kind of the thing you know <laughs> back show my balls <laughs> it's <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> that is very much comic book though that is yeah. very is it, though? okay that's it a, is. and that's what i was wondering the contrast of, of those two characters like how how they contrast like so the so are you saying very on point with the comic book oh okay Okay. For sure. But, but but the one thing that I was wondering was was because you mentioned the the whole the time with Sasha the time with did that yeah. take place in the comics? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. In, in almost like 
in and if I think about the time with Sasha and the time with Carl, that's almost exactly like almost word for word how it happened. Um, like his time with Sasha in the cell when um, what is it, Rapey Davy tries to <laughs> <laughs> attack her and he basically like you know murders him and all that like yeah, that yeah. D- yeah. directly happens in the comic that happens exactly as it happens in the show happened in the comics the situation with carl when carl sneaks to the sanctuary and shoots up some guys and he kind of takes him under his wing takes him around exact same thing happens you know so mm. you you do he shines very much in those episodes because you get to see more of his depth and he's not just a caricature that's the thing it's like i feel like like he's he's more developed now. You he has more dimension, and that's kind of what he needed. Um, because otherwise, then it just becomes kind of cartoonish, you know, or comic bookish. Let's just say, like right. it's, it, it lends a little bit, a lot more believability in reality, or you know, as much right. reality as we can get from a fictional television show. But yeah, yeah. It, it's yeah. it's but a that's different good to medium. Know. It's a that's different a... medium, so you yeah. have to adapt it. It can't be the same. Otherwise, it just comes off as hokey. Right, you know? right. As often, comics will. <laughs> will sometimes do exaggerated right. right but is it but it's believable in a comic because it has to jump off jump off the the pages for you you know it has to it's 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 not like a novel where you can go into some sort of like long monologues you know describing something it's like you only have like certain panels and imagery to kind of you really have to kind of like commit fully to kind of make this jump to the to the reader you know or to the viewer on a show, you know, you don't need to be excessive about it <laughs> because it's it's already there, you know. Um, right. So yeah, you have to kind of tone it down a little bit to kind of leave leave room for people to kind of walk yeah. through the door. And that's right. Jeffrey Dean Morgan in a nutshell. With that's Megan. what he's done. He's toned yeah. it down, and also like they've had to tone it down just because they have no other choice. I mean, in the in the comic book, Negan is incredibly vulgar, and I mean, like he they don't. He doesn't say on the show nearly half of the kind of things that he says in the comic just because it's AMC and you just can't get away with saying some of that stuff. Yeah, they, can, um, they can only say the F word so many times. Or I know. The, or the I think S it's word. Three, well, the F word, I think that they said that you can, they can get away with saying the F word, but they're only allowed three times a season. I don't know why three, but apparently it's, it's a certain number. I don't know how, what kind yeah. of formula or algorithm allows them to decide. <laughs> Cable that, television, FCC. I find that so incredulous, though. Don't you find that kind of crazy, the idea that it's like, you know, we're going to tightly regulate, you know, the F word. However, we can see a character gets his, I'm sorry, his fucking brains bashed in in front of everybody. Oh. I mean, like, <laughs> sorry. But you know what I mean? It's Good like, point. like, we're cut in half, like, right? Like, like, weird. Yeah. Like, I mean, to me, that is far more like, uh, like, if you want to regulate Graphic. something, yeah, yeah. If you want to regulate something, regulate that. I mean, obviously, like, you know, we're all adults here and, and that's fine. But I'm like, I would much rather somebody say, you know what? The, the violence is on is on another level you know maybe you know like if if somebody were like you know maybe i should be toned down a little bit which they did when you know the glenn and abraham episode happened i get it Oof. i get yeah. it you know i'm not saying that like oh my god yes we have to change everything but i understand where they're coming from because yes it was very very intense the f word really yeah, like i mean comparison. by yeah. comparison that's small potatoes based on like like i mean that's that's nothing compared to what they've shown on that show yeah, you know even even taking away some of the gratuitous violence violence and and gore and all that stuff let's just go to even the psychological possible damage that that the show can do i mean it really forces people to confront really difficult topics you know right. really difficult concepts like uh like having to be thrust into certain situations and just the idea of rick having to bite that guy's ear off in the uh oh god yeah the, the cleaners dudes. yeah exactly yeah see there you go and so having to be forced in those situations where that that's a possibility and and yeah. having kids either cheer it on or be horrified or not kids but like you yeah. know young adults um yeah yeah i don't think this is a kid show necessarily but no um, no but, it should. but yeah these are these are high concepts like uh, being i mean emily, the way emily kinney died even death in itself yeah. is very confrontational to and to have children right. watch that is Oof. you know 
forces a conversation, makes people think about death in ways that may not be true to life. If you're letting as your kids watch now. this show, if you're letting your yeah. kids watch this show, I'm giving you a side eye as a parent. As a fellow parent, <laughs> I'm giving you the major side eye. But isn't that like the whole I, reason why swearing is kind of a uh, taboo is because the off chance that you have children watching. It's not really a, a matter of austerity. It's the I whole, don't know. Is it? Is that where it comes from? Is that the I mean, the I have to assume. It? Yeah. I but mean, because, okay, it's, it's like network television there's a chance that oh they have access to network see we don't even have access to network television uh, anymore across the country other than through cable services and so mm. even then does the rule even apply anymore i mean we do have like hd antennas where we can get local channels now but how many people do you know have an hd antenna i can yeah. count maybe two people that i know of <laughs> yeah. you know so the rules are completely different now interesting i mean so i it, just it know that open the door I just mm-hmm. know that for me, when The Walking Dead is on, and as soon as like it starts getting close, and they start putting that <laughs> warning before <laughs> the show actually starts, <laughs> first of all, it, it the, the TV gets turned on in in the bedroom. The children are in another room being taken care of by my mother, and the door is locked. <laughs> There's nobody <laughs> coming in there to see what goes on. No way! <laughs> oh, like there is no way. No, yeah. you're not seeing any of this. No, yeah, yeah. I think even Jeffrey Dean Morgan like said that at some uh, there was some sort of Comic Con. Oh yeah, I don't, I don't know what it was. It was one of those like conventions or whatever. And, you he know, has people, young children, basically. He he has young children, or he has at least one young children that must be like seven or eight or something like that. Mm-hmm. And uh, I think that there was a kid at one of these conventions asking him a question. Oh, he was like, "Where are your parents? <laughs> <laughs> what are like, you doing here?" Yes, he's like, no, like you don't watch this. Hell no. Yeah. <laughs> like, no but I will say one way. thing: if if this kid is watching it, like, and he is watching it with it with his parents, I mean, that's I can deal I mean, with that. I'll tell you yes. why. Because it, yes. it's have your parents there means that you can talk to them about these yes. things, you know, or you know, hold it. You know, you're with your parents, you feel safe. There's there's that alone having yeah. the tactile right. feedback from your parents, that sort of thing, True. and to be able to explain certain things, like why did he do this or why did he do that or why. I, you know, right. why did he feel the need to bash Glenn's brains in twice? Um, you know, I know. But um, it's these things that, that you know, having a parent around while you're watching it is kind of like, okay, you're, like, you're both appreciating the show, but at the same time, you're learning, hopefully learning um, why this is wrong, why this is right. happening, um, you know, in, a, in an unideal world, you know, and, and yeah. to know that there could be some connections that could be made to reality that we can ease you through. Uh, which, I mean, eventually, you know that you're going to have to do this with your kids too carol <laughs> i know i know it, it's gonna happen i just i'm avoiding it for as long as possible yeah and i hope you do because i think i think it's important for for parents to ease children into certain shows too yes. something that i didn't have and and i think yeah, having I yeah i'm trying to think of with me like i mean we grew up in, in tight quarters so there wasn't really all that much room for privacy yeah, and yep. um i know that you know it was Friday nights were, you know, it was sort of the the exciting thing. It's like I would go to Blockbuster with my dad, and it's like you got to pick out a movie, and he got to pick out a movie, and you know there was usually one that was more like for the adults, and one that was a little bit more, you know, obviously family friendly or whatever. Um, but yeah, I remember certain movies. It was like we were kind of put in our room to play with the door closed. It's like no, nope, mm. <laughs> you're not coming out. I think specifically, I think specifically one time it was Silence of the Lambs. Specifically, oh. it's like no, nope, you all are staying in there. <laughs> You know, now that we're on this, has there been a movie where, has there been a moment where you kind of sat and watched an iffy movie together, like with your parents? Oh, God, I'm trying to think. I'm sure there has. You know what the thing is, is that my parents, my mother specifically, um, is not a huge movie person. So she really isn't as big into watching movies as much as my dad is. My dad loves movies. So I've watched more movies with him, but I'm trying to think if there was any movie I've ever seen with him that was like uncomfortable. Well, not uncomfortable, but like had question, not questionable, but like um, on the line or even a, over the line content. kind of content where you watched it together. I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I remember watching. Do you remember Dick Tracy growing up? Yes. The, the live yeah. action Dick Tracy with Warren Beatty. Yeah, with Warren Beatty and uh, Annette Benning. Yeah, do you remember how kind of almost dark that was? It was. It was dark. I remember watching it with my dad um, in the movie theaters, which is, oh, I wow. kind of think back and I'm like, what happened <laughs> to me and my dad? <laughs> but like, like you know, we watched Ghostbusters 2 together. We watched, um, which also was kind of 
frightening too. Um, yeah, yeah. And then uh, Dick Tracy, which dealt with some dark stuff, you mm-hmm. know, some kind of like stuff that kind of stuck with me for a little while. Yeah. But like to have him there, what kind of made me feel really, um, like, first of all, safe and right. knowing that, like, like, look, me and my dad, we didn't really talk about these things until I was a teenager. No. Oh, yeah. You know, not, you know, I was a little younger, but, but, um, this is, this is the way it was during that time. Yeah. You know? But I did have that, you know, I did have the tactile, like, the sense that he was there and, yeah, you know, no, for and, sure. Like, I don't think that, I mean, especially if I think about the movie, well, if I think about the movies that were a little bit rougher, like, I never, it was never movies that I watched on my own. It's you like, you saw Saw with him together, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I still have not seen any of those, and I don't want to. No, I don't. Oh. I, I saw the first one, and I was just kind of like, I don't, I don't want to see the second or third or fourth mm-hmm. one. No. no, this has been done. No. We saw we saw the prince, the the dude from the Princess Bride. We we saw we saw Terminator too. That was a little like okay. testy. There you, you go. Know, in terms That's of a good content, one. If I think about it, like you know, hey, your man is in that movie, Terminator 2. Wait, Xander Berkeley? Yes, he's the father who got, like, killed by the bad, by the evil Terminator. That's right. Holy that crap. That was him. Yeah. That was, oh, he looked so young. Oh, my God. Yes, but that right. was years. But that was many years ago, which is... color in his hair. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and skinny, oh, too. Like, much we, skinny. We is, we, is, we is old. We is old. Wow. I, yeah. I, I, can I say something? Yeah. <laughs> he looks way sexier now. <laughs> <laughs> you know Come what? No, so, you know what? Though yeah, I, the I, same page on this. I, I agree. I completely like because he looked. If I think about Terminator Two, and I think of him. I mean, he was kind of like a doofus. Like, he was sort of yes. like, you know, you were kind of like, okay, he got killed. Well, you know, like, you weren't, <laughs> it wasn't really like. Obviously. Obviously. It wasn't like a big law, you know. But now, I think he's definitely, he he's, but this is the thing. And I say this before. <laughs> you guys have it so damn good. Like, you, I'm sorry. Like, this is going off on a tangent. <laughs> when you do, you guys can get older and, like, you, it, it suits you. It does. It's like you're goofy as hell when you're younger. And then it's like you grow into this, like, mature older man stature. Oh and gosh. it works. And it, But it works. It's like you don't have to do anything, really. You know, you just have right. to allow yourself to, to you know, grow in a, you know, age in a dignified manner, you know. and, <laughs> and the ability to, if you yeah. qualify that a little bit more. because Yeah, like, you know, the worst that I've always seen is when people fight it. When people fight it, whether it's man or woman, it's sort of like, just stop. It just know? doesn't like, look good. It's not yeah. a good look. I've seen right. it on both sides and it's sort of like, it's, it's something looks off. It just doesn't look right. Whereas the people who like comfortably grow into it and own it, it's amazing. As yeah, long as you it, own it. You know? But to further your point, like men have that have the ability at least to kind of embrace it faster and also be co- comfortable with it faster, you know, and right. which and could lend to their the way they look and how they come off. You and know? the perception. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I mean personal perception and projection is is kind of reality too, right? Yeah, so Yeah. And that's not just Xander Berkeley. I mean, it's like <laughs> there's a ton of like actors that you could say the same thing. I mean, like nobody was going crazy for George Clooney when he was, you know, on Golden Girls, you know, and was like, <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's true. Nobody was like losing their so mind. So goofy, right? So goofy. You know, it's like, it's like a me- young comedian. Yeah, you know, like it was completely different. You know, that that happens all the time. All the time. Yeah. I, I, I feel how, that way I don't now. Know how we got on this. <laughs> I'll tell you what, just to just put a bookend in, uh, uh, you know, to bookend this conversation, it's like it's it wasn't until I was thirty that I really fully embraced. Uh, first of all, change like attitude, health changes. You know, it was already I'd already lost a lot of uh, you know enough hair to kind of be to try to be okay with it, and then I was. You know, it took me a little while, but only a small while, and then I was just like, okay, this is it. This is what's happening, and I, I'm like truly my best friend, best uh, self now. You know, it's like I, I, I that's what so. I feel, and that's know? the and, thing, and, like. And it's very interesting, the perception about that, because like some people can view it as like, I've had people who think that I'm super confident. And on my, in my mind, I don't think I'm super confident. I feel like I just don't care. Like, (laughs) do you know what I mean? It's like, like, you don't care anymore what other people think. Like, you're not 
um, I don't know, you're, you're just not too bent out of shape of like, oh, well, this person's going to think this or maybe this, like, no, you just don't care. And, but from a perception standpoint, some people view that as being confident. It's right. very interesting. Right. Yeah. Yeah. And, but you know what? That's a good, that's a good thing to kind of embrace. And it kind of all comes back to Jeffrey Dean Morgan, like, <laughs> He does own it. He owns he does it own enough, it. To, and and it, and it's kind of it's good that he's simultaneously being faithful to the comic, but also making a believable aged. I mean, he's not exactly a spring chicken. No, he's not exactly this huge jacked up dude. No. Who no. brute, brute force, you know, no. just by sheer intimidation alone, you yeah. know. So there is he. He really reinvents the character. I mean, not he, but I mean, it's it's writers. It's it's a combination of that. What but he, he lends, but to he the sells it. Character. You know, he 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 sells it, and I think he's done a good job of kind of you know just just be making this character his own. He he kind of made it into like his own character, his own interpretation, and he's done a good job with it. You know. Yeah, yeah, fully. I agree fully with that. I mean, I just. Based on what you've lent alone in terms of comic knowledge, I, I would probably be way more satisfied with the with the Negan that we have now as opposed Versus, to the one yeah. in the comics. It's just way more believable. It makes it, more sense to me. And spoiler alert, I don't think that Negan is going anywhere in the mid-season finale. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, everything points to him being key to keeping yes. people alive in some yep. senses. Yep, you know? I don't in, think. In spite of everything, which we yeah. may see next week. So, or next like, week. Oh. in a few days <laughs> right i know right but yeah like when people are like oh you know is negan gonna die i'm like eh, don't hold your breath on that that ain't happening i mean there are there is the camp of people that feel like something could happen to daryl yeah i don't know yeah i'm, I'm in that camp too you, th- you think so you think something could potentially happen to daryl yeah I do. I th- I think I that do. he's. I think it's a long time coming. I don't know if they'll do it, but I do. In in my mind, I feel like it's a long time coming that something should, because again, he's not in the comic, so he really doesn't affect the storyline in any which way. If we're going to go by that logic, but right. also, I mean, he's been on this sort of like Rambo sort of reckless, you know, crusade. And how long are you going to be able to keep that going before it bites you? You know, right? Like you know to yourself i mean your reckless behavior already got glenn killed like i mean yes negan killed him but your reckless behavior behavior didn't help your reckless behavior in terms of storming this truck into the sanctuary is is gonna give them an, an outing to be able to escape and come to alexandria like how many times you know can you know this stuff happen and you are able to walk away fairly unscathed you know yeah. and maybe he, this is his way of maybe making it see and you know it's funny that you brought that up because maybe this is his way of make trying to make it right but in doing so he just keeps falling into the same traps and right and in a weird moral or ethical way he's that's you know it, it kind of illustrates that like you keep it's like you should have just left your chips on the table you know like stopped while you were ahead you know, so or, what do you think what do you think potentially would happen to daryl then i think it might might come to dwight i mean i still stick with the dwight idea is that mm-hmm. i think in in the effort of trying to end Dwight. I mean, for all I know, Tara, Tara might get hurt, not killed, mm-hmm. but hurt as a result right. of a confrontation with Dwight. But right. Daryl is the one that ends up getting killed. And and mm-hmm. it'll be in a way that we can accept Dwight in a way to the community. Like, like right. oh, Daryl goes, tries to go too far. Yeah. 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 No, it's true. Because I think because I think people are already at that point with Daryl, like, what are you doing? You know, like that it's sort of like you've been reckless for quite some time. Right. And I don't think that it's that Dwight Dwight kills him. I won't see. I won't say that, but I think maybe something happens to where uh, Dwight gets. Uh, sorry, Daryl gets himself killed somehow, or something happens. A walker, maybe. You right, know, in trying to get to Dwight. Exactly. Exactly. So I don't think it would be that Dwight ends him, but I do think it'll. Uh, you know, if you want me to put a fine point to this, like it's going to be a choice between going after Dwight and letting it be, and he chooses to not let it go, and that's what and gets that's him gonna killed. Be his, and that'll be his downfall. Yeah. 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 that's that's honestly what i think and that's it's that's probably the most that's precise prob- prediction i've ever had you know that's so. very probable i mean that's the thing it's like it's all very probable i will be texting you on sunday <laughs> as, as this thing is going on Hold on my facebook messenger man <laughs> and and watch us both be wrong and it's heath in a helicopter hey man I'm, I'm happy to be wrong as long as it's it's right yeah, <laughs> morgan wrong as long as it's right <laughs> As long as it's right. Do right by me with The Walking Dead. Do right by me. Do right by me. Give me something to remember for the next couple of months. Daryl, give me strength. 
<laughs> so I, I think no better way to end off uh, two hours and 45 minutes, probably oh my God. two hours and 15 minutes edited with saying thank you for listening to Squawking Dead. You can reach us at squawkingdead.com. Reach all of our social media and ways to listen to the show, either directly by the website or using Apple Podcasts, Google Play Music, all these different subscription services. Email us squawkingpodcast at gmail.com. And uh, with that, we will wish you a good weekend we're gonna watch the 90 minute episode and we're gonna unpack that sucker over the course of maybe either the same week or we may even take the time to post it the week after because there may be a little bit of a hiatus between now yeah. and fear the walking dead i hope so that carol can catch up and with that we bid you adieu until the next one see you next time take care y'all Rock. <laughs>